I'll just start a Hello. call. Hello. Oh. Hey, buddy. Hey, I have no idea what we're doing, but I'm super excited about it. <laughs> That's good. I'm uh, glad. Oh, boy. I, I have a feeling. <laughs> I feel like I walked into a trap, but I still am looking forward to seeing what's going on. You have not walked into a trap, not in the remote slide, is good, sir. <laughs> That's what you would say if it was a trap, but I believe you. What's up? I, I would be honest with you. Mm -hmm. like, you would, you would. That's right. We, we've we known each other for many a year now, and so I believe that... Uh, you know, you could, you could, you could trust my discount bargain bin honesty. <laughs> Absolutely. <Okay. laughs> uh, now, uh, I've gone ahead and shared my screen with you because that'll give you a better, swifter update than mm. the actual like Twitch stream itself will. Hmm. Okay. Wonderful. I appreciate it. Yes. Executive suite. I can see it. All right, great. Do you have any idea what it is you're looking at right now? Other than no the clue. Executive suite? Mm, no clue, I'm afraid. Oh, so I, am, this will... I am so thrilled for this to be true. <laughs> <laughs> never, I never, much like, uh, what was that thing? Um, the style's very similar to what's some zoos in the title. What is it? Um, Star Zoo? Space. Oh, Star Zoo, yeah. Okay. Just like that, I have no idea. Like, I, I browsed okay, one so, video of yours from time, but I have no idea what this is. So, uh, Executive Suite uh, is a game that came out in 1982. It's mm -hmm. a text-based business social simulation game. Okay, uh, interesting. So All you, right. You are uh, an employee of uh, a corporation, and oh, your boy. task is making a series mm -hmm. of of decisions on the job and off the job to navigate office politics and uh, try to ascend to the top of the okay. uh, the top of the corporation um, before you're fired or you're forced to retire. Oh boy. Okay. All right. I can't wait. I'm gonna make. I'm gonna make CEO. We'll see. Or I'll retire. We'll see. In shame. Okay. Great. And great. And your uh, update for the for the uh, the Discord. Like, mm -hmm. screen share should be splendid, because I had a free month of Nitro, and so that should be in beautiful, mm. crisp FPS shifting. It is. 1080p, 60 FPS. None of this peasant 30 FPS crap. Right. So, welcome to Mighty Microcomputer Corporation, Inferno Kadok. Okay. Wonderful. MMC. As you enter the MMC building, the receptionist mm -hmm. Angie smiles as if she knows you, and asks if you are new to Mighty Microcomputer Corporation. He sure is. Oh, super new. Okay. Uh, Angie is eager to help you get started, and uh, we do desire initial interview because there are no resumes on file. Makes sense. All right. You are directed to the personnel department. You're going to be meeting Simon Woodstock, the personnel manager. It's good to oh, see boy. you made it. Try to relax. I'm going to ask you some questions and hopefully provide some answers on how you might fit in MMC. What is your first name? What do you want to be called today? Uh, we'll, we'll call myself Chuck. Chuck? It's a strong, yeah. a good name. I like it. Thank you. Okay. Chuck. Yeah, it's a good 80s name, right? right. Chuck. What's your last name, Chuck? Uh, we'll say uh, Hemsworth. Hemsworth. Okay, Chuck Hemsworth. Yeah. Last part of your name, what part of the country are you from? We can, we, we can have, like, Canadian terminology. It's perfectly fine. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, we'll say we're from the, uh, the east, the east coast. Okay. East coast, though, bye. Okay, yeah. what is your hometown and state? You could just, you, of course, do not have to dox yourself. Mm -hmm. You can give me anything. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Uh, uh, home. Oh, no worries. Uh, we'll say, how, wait, it, state should be an American state, right? I mean, you could if you want. Canada. Okay, we'll say East Coast. We'll say Maine. So what's a town in Maine? Uh, Bl um, oh, what's that fictional town from Stephen King? Castle Rock, Maine. Castle Rock, Maine. All right. Growing up in the East, where did you go to college? State University, city, private, or I never had time to go to college? Oh, I have to say, like, some super frou-frou East Coast private college for sure. Okay. What was the name of your super frou-frou East Coast oh, private college? Okay. Like, oh my god, what's the most pretentious name I could think of? Um, it has to work, the academy has to be in it. Mm -hmm. The, oh, the Mayflower Academy. 
Mayflower Academy. Okay, okay, that's good, that's good, that's good. What did you study at Mayflower Academy? Girls, boys, business admin, engineering, or liberal arts? Uh, <laughs> let's go! <laughs> I like the first two options, it's very funny. Um, three is too obvious. Let's say five, liberal arts. Okay, cardboard box major, gotcha. How'd you do in your studies? Mm -hmm. Great, scored all the time. So come loud. Dean's list could have done better, but for all the parties. Who cares? I graduated or didn't make it. I flunked out. Oh, we'll say let's be the summa cum laude of a cardboard box uh Okay. A degree. Yeah. Did you go on to graduate school or had you had enough education after Mayflower Academy? Did you go to a ranked university? Did you tour oh, oh, Europe? I, attend a good I, local I, school? I, or <laughs> jump from school to work to make money? Oh, nice, nice. Um, well, I think Mayflower Academy taught Chuck everything he needs to know, so he forgot about school and, and toured Europe. Okay. Schooling is an important qualification, but so is work experience. How many years of prior work experience do you have, Chuck Hemsworth? I'll we'll say, like, one. <laughs> what? I saw on the sports page the Giants one. If you are a sports enthusiast, what interests you? Golf. Oh, golf. Golf? I have golf. Gotcha. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. Oh. oh, yeah, no, no, never mind. I was going to say sailing is also frou fruit, but golf is great. I have so a few personal I questions. Get. I hope you don't mind cooperating. How old are you, Chuck? Uh, we'll say one year experience. We'll go with really something really funny, like 32. 32. Like, that was, it was like a long <laughs> tour of Europe. A really long tour. <laughs> we got lost a little bit, and you know. Uh, shit. <laughs> what is your sex? Male, female, non-binary? Oh, well, Chuck is a fella. Male. Alright. What is your current marital status, Chuck? Divorced, single, oh. married? <laughs> if you can believe it, he's single still. All Who'd right. have thought? After all this talk, I am feeling very comfortable about your application, oh. MMC. Just to see if I am tra on track. How would you describe yourself? Blind ambition? Just want to reach the top? Technician? Party person, work before mm. pleasure, or work as a hobby. Life is meant for living. Let's go with blind ambition. He's just all in. Uh, he's all in. One year work experience. <laughs> <One year. laughs> he's just listen. He took a lot of time to decide what he wanted to do, but now, but now he's, he's committed. It out, now he's all in. He's yep. committed. Laser focus. There's no question, Chuck. You make an impressive applicant. Let's see what entry-level mm. positions of MC might have available for you. Mm -hmm. The economy is depressed, though, so the opportunities oh. are not going to be great starting off. <laughs> oh, great. Uh, so you have sales trainee, draftsman, oh. assembler, accounts payable clerk, maintenance person, or general helper mailroom. And the higher the oh. job level, the better the job is, but the more demanding the job will be. Okay. I'm a little, <laughs> I'm a little shell shocked with sales trainee because that is a uh, that is a soulless profession. No, no, uh, no offense to anyone in sales. I've done it for uh, a little bit. We will, you know what? We have to go with the classic story: working his way out of the mailroom. So we'll go with general helper. Okay. I just want to check, viewers. I haven't heard any complaints. I have Inferno at the same level that I have other co-op mm -hmm. people. We're good on that front, yeah. Griffith doesn't have to perform any arcane eldritch sorcery, seances, or rituals. Delightful. Congratulations, Chuck. You have the job of General Helper Mailroom. The following came in your morning electronic mail. Uh, you're making 14000 a year. Mm. Uh, you have one week vacation. And you have a portrait of Malcolm Farmsworth III. Uh, he's the president of Mighty ah. Microcomputer Corporation. Those are thank your perks. You, thank you. Wonderful. Great perks. Great perks. Jack Stark, a regional sales manager, proposes a little extra preparation for tonight's MMC Christmas party. He gives you two bottles of excellent vodka to slip into the punch bowl. Do you do it? Act shocked and decline, or say yes, but keep the vodka for yourself. Um, let's be a good little sycophant and say yes, do it. Jack thinks you are a clever young employee. The three people mm. allergic to alcohol who drink the punch don't agree. You keep a low, Jeez. sober profile. Allergic to alcohol. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Jeez, okay. A no maintenance worries. man, Felix, chastises you for repairing a photocopier. He threatens to have you what? fired. The next day, Beth, the executive vice president's secretary, asks you to fix the machine again. 
Do you politely say no? Fix it. Explain your situation to Beth, or ask for written permission. Ask for written permission. Definitely. Let's be clever, Chuck. Let's be clever. This Bureau is not high Bureau school. Bureaucracy. You are advised to take a maturity course. Oh, God damn it! <laughs> God damn it, you... Yeah. Yeah. As another favor to Beth, you stay late to do yeah, some yeah. photocopying. Mm -hmm. Pursuing your copying, you discover an opening in the marketing department. <gasps> do you apply for the job, wait a week, or decide to go to the movies? No, no marketing sounds perfect for Chuck. Let's apply for that job. Your initiative and aggressiveness, plus a strong recommendation from Beth, do no harm mm. at all. You are a serious contender. Uh, Chuck, yeah. you have been in the general helper mailroom position for one year, and you did an average job. You'll be remembered for using poor judgment, making uh. friends with senior sales management, a bureaucratic approach to problem solving, and yep. your resourcefulness. The economy Wonderful. is fair. Um, I have two years of job experience However, now. you only have one job option open to you now, which is maintenance first. <laughs> what? What happened to my... Oh, I didn't get the marketing job. You didn't job. get the okay, marketing fine. job. Okay, I'll be a maintenance person. I'll threaten other mailroom people. All right. <laughs> it's the cycle of life. You're making 15000 a year instead of 14000 and your, right. your perks remain the same. Policy of using limited lighting makes cleanup crew... Cleanup impossible for the night maintenance crew. Do you... Turn lights on, ignore complaints, or complain to supervisor. Complain to the supervisor will do nothing. Let's take some gumption and turn the lights on. All right. This violation of company policy will cause you more problems than dirty corners. Your mm -hmm. boss is not receptive to the argument that cleanliness is next to godliness. Uh-oh. Okay. I'm learning. I'm learning. You overhear a complaint about the sloppy appearance of maintenance people and deduce that neatness will help you advance. Do you send uniforms to cleaners, buy an iron, or assume an attitude of rumpled chic? Okay, sending to the uniforms to the cleaners will be an additional expense they won't like. I'll buy an iron and do it myself, too. Neatness starts in the home. This is the most economical way to improve appearance and show others you care about your work situation. Try to avoid burning your clothes while learning to use this new personal maintenance equipment. All right. You discover a leak in the roof on a rainy night when water drips into your eye. The water is also dripping onto half-completed and very expensive circuit boards. What's the first thing you do? Cover them? Call your supervisor a Sundance? Or move the boards? Half-completed? Cover the boards. Cover yeah. the boards. Plant setup remains undisturbed, but the circuit boards are not yet out of harm's way. A nice effort, but only partially effective. Later in the evening, a pool of water on the covering attracts a group of ducks. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's time for a job review after one year. You did average. You failed to comply with MMC policy. You had resourcefulness, and you provided ineffective solutions to problems, Chuck. Wonderful management material yep. right here. The economy is fair. And you do have one job open to you at level two. I'll do it. I'll do it. Assembler, Assembler, baby. Level two. Applying for a new MMC position is fun, but you never know what will be recalled from your past. You're remembered mm. for bad things. You're remembered for mm. one positive thing. And you are edged out by a better qualified candidate. Obviously, things aren't going your way at MMC, Chuck. Trepidation, you open the top envelope in your morning mail. Dear Chuck... Well, MMC regrets to say that you and MMC must part company. A less people-oriented company, you would be fired. Causes for this parting include providing ineffective solutions to problems, failing to comply with MMC policy, using poor judgment, a bureaucratic approach to problem solving. Finance will give you an accounting of your worth as you leave MMC. Very truly yours, Malcolm Farnsworth III. That was astoundingly quick. <laughs> All right, so your total current value uh, is... Uh, Mostly buoyed by your current age. However, it is docked by uh, your poor title and the fact that you were fired from MMC. Oh, okay. Hit the road, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Wow, okay. I can see why this 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 game is uh, is popular. Wow. All right, would you 
Would you like to give Chuck another chance here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's make a, a younger, more wiser version. All right, we're recreating, Chuck. Chuck. Gotcha. Start yeah. a new career. We desire mm -hmm. an initial interview. Mm -hmm. We're going to go meet with Simon Woodstock and Chuck. Yep. Hemsworth. Yeah. Hemsworth. From the east. Yeah, still from the east, yeah. Castle Rock, Maine. Mm -hmm. You went to private college still? Oh, we're we're gonna we're going to yeah we're still gonna go private college because I love uh, Mayflower Academy so we'll do that Mayflower Academy and instead of liberal arts let's give them business administration okay business admin uh still two uh we're gonna go a little bit different and we're gonna go with one great scored all the time okay. Did you go on to graduate school, or had you had enough education after Mayflower Academy? Yeah, I still want to go with a low job experience, but we'll blame it on graduate school. So we'll say we'll do a, attended a good local school. Okay. What was the name of your graduate school? Oh, my God. Um, <clears throat> it was business administration, so I don't know. Um, we'll say... Oh, um, yeah, we'll say like MIT. How about we do? Well, no, that's that's more technology. I have no clue. Um, <laughs> I should have thought about this. They were gonna ask. Um, I don't know. Oh, we'll say the University of um, Bangor, Maine, right? University of Bangor. You could you could say Castle Rock. You know, like a local oh, like college. So you know, that, I like that. Oh, yeah, it's a Castle local, Rock yes. Tech. I don't know. Castle Rock. Yeah, Tech is perfect. Sure. A graduate school. Sure, whatever. That'll work. What did you study there? Undergrad anatomy, law, liberal arts, engineering, or business? Business, baby. With your demanding major, how did you fare? Made a lot of friends, learned a lot, graduated the honors, and none of the above. Learned a lot, too. All right. School's an important qualification, so is work experience. How many years of prior work experience do you have, Chuck? We're going to say he has five years of experience. All right, maybe did did some internships here. Mm -hmm. You're a sports enthusiast. What interests you? Um, We're going to go sailing this time. Sailing? Mm -hmm. How old is this Chuck? We're going to shave off two years. We're going to make him 30. 30. Male? Male, yep. Still single? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, how would you describe yourself, Chuck? We're going to... We're going to give that corporal answer of number four, work before pleasure. So they say, they'll, you know, that old thing of like, oh, I believe in work-life balance, but they just still work all the time. So yeah, four. Gotcha. Two of the entry level positions we might have available for you, and the economy is expanding this go around. Yes, the economy's so working for you. Chuck. Can, you can start off uh, potentially in job level four salesman, marketing assistant, trainee financial analyst, senior accounting clerk, customer service clerk, or engineer in training. Okay, we're gonna. I was really hoping for marketing, so let's go with marketing assistant. All right, you got the job. You're making 28000 per year. You've got your own desk, a two week vacation. An official yeah. MMC jacket and travel and entertainment allowance. You got some petty cash. Wow. Okay. Now, now we're rocking. Now we're rocking. Okay. Sam Danger, the vice president of marketing, asks you to see a client on your vacation to Des Moines to visit your in-laws. Your response? Sure, there's nothing to do in Iowa. Say yes, but don't do it. Cancel vacation. Ask company to subsidize travel costs. Hmm. I don't have as much pull yet. I'm just an assistant. So we will say, sure, there's nothing to do in Iowa. One. You're displaying the same loyalty to MMC you show to your Iowa in-laws. One will reward you with apple pie, the other with a slice of the pie. Pie. You hurry from the building to your car in order to get a special delivery package to the post office before it closes. In the company parking lot, a well-dressed man asks you to help start his Mercedes. Do you help oh. or decline to help? Oh, yeah. We help him. We help him. Mercedes? Right. Oh, definitely. The gentleman turns out to be Dudley Farmsworth, the leader of a stockholder's revolt 
against the MMC's shakily entrenched board and president. As a way of thanking you, and perhaps getting information, Dudley invites you to a party. Nope, decline. I, mean, I won't, no. We're gonna be a loyal, loyal MMC, man. You missed the opportunity to meet some interesting, influential people. Of course, you're not mm -hmm. seen with current management adversaries, either. Bingo. The Vice President of Sales, Red Turner, invites you to spend an afternoon drinking with clients the same day your monthly report is due. Ooh. Congrats on getting an invite from the VP of Sales. I was about to say, VP of Sales, you have to... You have to accept, but monthly reports. We're going to say it's better to ask for forgiveness than for permission, so we're going to accept. You make good contact with field sources, but lose an afternoon of work and are late with a monthly report. You also develop a taste for Cure Royales, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, and receive an anonymous Ooh. copy of Real Men Don't Eat Quiche. Awesome. Have Good you had quiche before? Quiche. <laughs> I have had quiche, and frankly, I find it, um... Uh, screw quiche, what? okay. Screw <laughs> quiche. Uh, you did a good job after a year, Chuck. Mm. You had an aggressive go-getter approach, good judgment, yeah. you remained loyal to management, and you made friends with senior sales management. That's what I am talking about. This is the Chuck yeah. I love. And your econo the economy is still expanding, Chuck. So oh, we've got yeah. fives up here. You want to be assistant product manager and engineer, production foreman, compensation supervisor, or accounting supervisor. Uh, those Ooh. are all job level fives. You were previously a job level four. Yeah, let's do assistant product manager for sure. Okay, assistant product manager. Yeah. You're remembered for your aggressive go-getter approach, and you got the job. Uh, yes. Making 36000 per year. You've got a, your own cubicle a management workshop, and personalized stationery. Oh my god, Hemsworth making it? All right, let's roll. At a little-known cafe, you see your counterpart at MMC's main competitor, Behemoth Systems, having mm. lunch with a Nippon Central employee. They leave hurriedly before you can say hello, forgetting a binder, which turns out to be Behemoth's marketing plan for the coming year. Do you return the binder, give it to your supervisor, hold it for your own use, or try to sell the information. Three, hold it for my own use. If Behemoth Systems isn't sure you have the book, they may still use it. Your counterpart will probably try to cover up. After all, that's what you do. <laughs> exactly. It's. I think it's the, the most cunning option. We'll see. You discover a salesman is receiving kickbacks from your largest customer. Analog Concerns. The information comes in an anonymous letter. You fail to find the author, but the contents are verified. Do you replace the salesman, ask for a cut, or ignore the situation? Let's replace the salesman. Let's play this one straight. You establish a clear moral tone, which proves very unpopular with the sales department. In a tense confrontation, you cite God, America, and Malcolm Farnsworth III. Malcolm Farnsworth III is the winning argument. <laughs> nice. You are asked by Sigmund, the group product manager, to assemble a marketing technology report you suspect is to be sold. You refuse, comply, offer to take him to a sushi bar, or try to go direct to the company in question. Let's do a little schmoozing. Let's take him to the sushi bar. Pointed, if not subtle, indicator of awareness. Be kind and bring Alka Seltzer for Sigmund. Can do. It's time for a job review, and you did a good job. You had resourcefulness, yeah. you had impeccable honesty, and you had good judgment. God, yeah, all right. The economy is now depressed, but mm -hmm. thanks to your performance, mm -hmm. you do have an opening to be market research supervisor. Yeah, let's take it. You're remembered for good things, Chuck, and you got this job. Yeah, thumbs up. 32, uh, you know, the two very mm -hmm. successful years building this uh, work experience. Making uh -huh. forty-seven thousand per year. You got a cubicle. Travel and entertainment allowance. You got a life insurance policy. You have a working Ooh. telephone, and you have matching <laughs> furniture. I love how this implies that before <laughs> I this know, point, right? my <laughs> phone was never working. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah, I have a working. I have a phone at work. It just doesn't work. <laughs>
<laughs> I get so much done. Um, yeah, this is great. All right. uh, you know the type typographical error in a report that has subsequently led Sam Danger, the VP of Marketing, to issue erroneous predictions. Do you tell Sam what happened? Do you tell the senior VP of Marketing, B.T. Barnum, or burn the original report? Ooh, this one's tricky, because if I tell Sam what happened, I'll be like one of those know-it-all jerks. Uh, if I go over his head, that will be even more unpopular, but burning the original report... Get a, get a... Hmm, he did, no one will know, and I won't get credit. <laughs> we'll tell Sam what happened. Your keen observation and early warning creates a correctable situation. You are praised for sharp-eyed work and told that MMC will pay for regular trips to your optometrist. Well, that's yeah. good. Before this point, we they were not paying shot. for that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> before that, yeah. Returning from vacation, you discover on your desk the rough draft of a negative memo about the market research manager, Elaine Pierce. Do you to try to discover the author, inform Elaine, ignore the memo, or sign and circulate the memo? Market research manager. Hmm. You know what? Let's uh, let's do something very similar to the last decision. Let's inform Elaine. You have made a friend of Elaine, but a foe of the anonymous memo writer, who could be anyone. You keep mm. your eyes peeled for a suspect, but the culprit never surfaces. You go to the optometrist for help with your eye strain. <laughs> it's paid for, so I'm okay. Yeah. You're chosen for long-term internal development as a manager. The group product mm -hmm. manager segment recommends you spend a year in a line job. Do you accept, tell the VP of marketing, claim physical disability, or ask for an extension in your current position? Hmm. Internal development as a manager. Um, let's play, let's play it out. We'll, we'll accept it. Okay. Doug MacArthur advises you to apply for an operations job. On his advice, you cut the cord to marketing. Mm -hmm. You did a good job. You had an open manner of addressing problems. You had a good relations with B.T. Barnum. You befriended Doug MacArthur and Frank Herman for two yeah. years. The economy is fair, and okay. you do have an opening here as marketing product manager. You're so inclined. Yeah, so... Was uh, are we assuming that the line job was just something that I did because I accepted it, or do I would ha would I have to take a line job at this point? Because I don't see. I, I, I don't think you have to take a line okay. job at this point. I I think that's shoveled into the whole like two years thing. But maybe Story. we'll find out if you get swatted down whenever you. Okay, plug. you know what? Yeah, let's do a learning experience. Let's go straight from marketing product manager. Let's climb that ladder. Right. You're remembered for your impeccable honesty, and you got mm -hmm. this job. Uh, you're making 64000 per year. You've got a private uh -huh. office, travel and entertainment allowance, life insurance policy, a Chevy company car, and garage parking. All right. Very successful and four still, years. Hopefully my phone does still work. I'm assuming these are like <laughs> compounding benefits. Yes, yes, yes. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. You are pressed to get the revised m and 3 project to market. You now mm. need cooperation from all departments. You decide to tantalize your co-workers with incentive pay, be a good guy, or threaten the co-workers? Um, one might be inclined for two, but good guys typically don't... I mean, they can inspire morale, but not really productivity. Let's tantalize them with incentive pay. Bribery is one of the most effective motivators. Your co-workers love their new incentive pay. Productivity improves 40%, but your development costs are getting out of hand. Hmm... The sales force demonstrates reluctance to push your favorite new product, the M&M3, as competitive technology has leapfrogged the advantages it once offered. Do you scrap the product, increase sales incentives, call in Calvin Klein to create a designer special, or reduce <laughs> prices dramatically? Ooh. This is a really interesting idea. Fallacy of sunk costs, for one, or like... Branding for number three. I'm torn between the two. Screw it. I know the costs are high, but it could work. Let's call in CK. Let's call in Calvin Klein. Branding, baby. Do you know who... Do you know the Calvin Klein brand? Just a, a side question. Oh, yeah. Well, hold up a second. He designs clothes. This isn't going to be useful. Start <laughs> the project. Thank you, advisor. <laughs> 
we can say you're Chuck's best friend, and he's like going over a drink about this. And he's like, I'm thinking of bringing Calvin Klein, and you're like, you know what he does, right? Right. Oh shit. <laughs> right. So scrap the product. That's what you want to do. Yeah, scrap it. Fallacy of the sunk cause. So you decided to scrap it. Now you must go before senior management and explain the failure. You claim poor support from manufacturing, extraordinary mm. effort by competition, bad design. Don't know. Okay, we are going to blame the engineers and say the design was bad. Bad design. Ask yourself whose idea this project was and how it got into so much trouble without warning. Unfortunately, at least three of the answers are sitting across the table reviewing your presentation. Oh you just flunked corporate politics 1A. Yeah, I did, didn't I? Shit, this is my idea! You know. Okay, I should have brought in the Calvin Klein, but okay. Yeah, you know, like this was a bad idea, and the people who endorse the bad idea are the ones who are looking at you as you're telling them it's a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, shit. Okay. Yeah. The market research manager Elaine oh. Pierce files yeah, a report Elaine. which is critical of your execution of the marketing plan. Do you file a counter report, confront Elaine, put out a contract on her, or try to write out the situation? Yeah, the contract. Tunner. Wow, that's that's something. Um, confront here isn't gonna do shit. Although she's kind of a bit of my the bit of my pal, but if she's if this is business, right? Is my counter report gonna be strong enough? I can't write out the situation. I have to at least fight for it, right? Because this could be a fireable offense. File a counter report. Okay. You cover yourself in a thoroughly corporate fashion. The matter becomes so inflated that everyone forgets what it's about. Yes! After two yeah. years, Chuck, you did a poor job. Yeah. You'll be remembered for extravagant taste when MMC is paying the bill, acting yeah. in a progressive and decisive manner, publicly criticizing the MMC product line, alienating yeah. senior management, yeah. and some indiscreet involvement in office politics. The economy is fair, uh, but you're with sixes now. Yeah, okay. Uh, but that's okay. We're not fired. Let's, um... Let's learn from our mistake. Let's actually, maybe, oh, we could, I don't know. It's, it's not programmed in the game, but we could be like, you know, I should have taken that, that line, you know, suggestion. Let's be assistant plant manager. Okay. Let's manage, you know, on the floor. Because I blame the engineering, right? So maybe I need you to learn what it's all yeah. about. You're remembered yeah. for your aggressive go-getter approach, and you got the job. That is a salary which is lower than what you previously had. You no longer have the Chevy uh, company car or the garage space. Hmm. Well. Uh, Doug McArthur, the senior VP of operations, says the quality control rejection rate is too high. Hmm. He assigns you to correct the problem. Your response is, must change the standards, must fight Doug, change jobs, don't enforce the standards. Talk to all parties involved. Talk to all parties involved. All right. Good move. There's nothing like having the facts before acting. Mm hmm An investigation reveals that pre-assembled parts are causing quality control rejections. You mm -hmm. must act to rectify the problem originating at your supplier, Mill Design Company. Do you order more parts to compensate, assemble parts at a higher price in the home plant, or pressure mill for improvement? It rolls downhill. It's pressure milled for improvement. A little motivation get the pre-assembled parts up to quota without disrupting your assembly procedures. Threatening to take your business elsewhere should qualify as a little motivation. Mm -hmm. Disaster strikes while Barney Stone, the plant manager, is on vacation, and you are in charge. God damn it, Barney. Gale Force winds knock down a wall sheltering expensive quality control equipment. You're, do you evacuate your personnel immediately, try to save the equipment, or call in an individual who has not been properly uh, introduced? Yeah, I have no idea who Red Adair is, so that doesn't so make yes, much sense. Gale Force winds have knocked down a wall sheltering expensive quality control equipment. What's your move? Well, let's evacuate personnel. All your personnel make it safely to a shelter, except for one fanatic kite flyer who sees these winds as the opportunity of a lifetime. Thank God it's not a flutter. The surfers will be in the next county by now. <laughs> wow. You did a good okay. job after two years. Yes. You had good interpersonal skills, you had good team player instincts, you had good judgment, you supported and had faith in your people, you acted in a progressive and decisive manner, the economy I'm is nice. fair, 
you've got an opportunity for a different seven production control manager yeah let's take it let's go you remembered for good things and you got this job chuck yes making sixty nine thousand dollars per year you've got mm -hmm. a private office travel and entertainment <laughs> allowance life yes. insurance policy chevy company car uh, you have access to a wide area telephone service line, which ah, is like a ah. like a, a long distance service. Uh, okay, thank you. It was a flat rate sort of thing instead of like escalating prices and uh, garage oh. parking. Wow, there we go. I got my car and my parking back. I, I'm so happy. You must lead OSHA inspectors. Uh, OSHA uh, mm -hmm. is uh, Occupational Safety and Health. Uh, administration okay, yeah. they uh investigate you know like workplaces like for like mm -hmm. safe and healthy issues on uh, a plant mm -hmm. tour to investigate an unsafe condition charge made by an anonymous caller do you be mr nice guy ask for court order give a cryptic tour or try to intimidate them okay osha is is a i i'm familiar enough about them to know that they're a big uh, like labor, uh, well, not labor, but uh, yeah, safety organization. We're yes, going to be it, super it, nice. It, it, We're going to be like, I'm super nice. I have nothing to hide. We're going to play ball. Yes, it's, a, Mr. Nice it, it's under the United States Department of Labor. It's a it's a government yeah. thing. So it's a government. Yeah. So, yeah, you don't yeah. fuck with the government. <laughs> the Mr. Nice Guy, Chuck says. Yeah. Yeah. They wonder mm -hmm. what you're hiding, but are polite during inspection. And they come buzzing around the plant like bees to honey for a few weeks. They can discover no problems and are very disappointed. Excellent. You must adjust production schedules to allow for the introduction of the M M four system. Okay. Do you build a new facility? Use linear programming for efficiency and timeliness. Do by hand out of consideration for individual workers' needs, or add a third shift for new products. I really like the word salad of two. <laughs> and like and that corpo speak that sounds something exactly like a product manager would do let's go to okay efficiency improvement may be offset by inflexibility and intolerance to yes. variation you contemplate robot technology they don't have a union they don't eat much and they talk directly to your computer <laughs> you must make recommendations on the distribution of manufacturing equipment between new and old plants on the m m4 project your reaction is be selfish, new equipment to the home plant, be fair, mm -hmm. be arbitrary. Hmm. Arbitrary would make no sense. We'll, we'll be fair. New equipment is split according to need and responsibility for the greatest productivity. Both plants reach peak efficiency quickly. Your savvy is indicated in your annual bonus. Yes! After two years, you did a good job. Your positive management style, open manager, manner of addressing problems, a bureaucratic approach to problem solving. <laughs> yes! Yeah, your team player instincts and your sense of fair play. The economy is expanding, and you have oh my God. eight available to you. Western Area wow. Sales Manager, Group Product Manager, Senior Manager Engineering Projects, The Plant Manager, Personnel Manager, Treasurer. You know, I started him out with marketing, but I think Chuck has a good head on his shoulders for, for management and stuff. So we're going to go with... Um, you were senior previously. manager engine yeah senior manager engineering projects okay you're remembered for remaining loyal to management you're remembered for your impeccable honesty you're remembered for supporting and having faith in your people but you're you don't have the background to manage this department mm, that's true and you're edged out uh, by a better qualified candidate okay I see. We gotta stay in my lane, huh? All right, all right. Let's go with. Um... No, that option is now gone, and now something else is appeared at the bottom list. Company controller. Controller. I have no idea. You what were previously that means. the assistant plant manager, but you know. You yeah. Okay. Say... Let's just go up as plant manager then. Yeah, okay. Let's be plant manager. You're remembered for your team player instincts, positive management style, and supporting and have faith for your people. But you're remembered for some indiscreet involvement in office politics. Um, Nevertheless. But still. You got that job. You're making awesome. 81000 a year. You're 40. You've been with MMC for 10 years, mm. a quarter of your wow. life. You've got a private office, travel and entertainment allowance, a Buick company car, and a life insurance policy. And presumably, Beauty. the rolling benefits of everything which came before. <laughs> mm -hmm. A Buick, baby! Right. Anticipated market demand for the MMM4 model is very high. You mm -hmm. must develop plans for plant expansion to handle the demand. You decide to go very cheap, functional, gold-plated, or delegate this task. No, we're going to be functional. 
two. The facilities are satisfactory to workers. The finance department and productivity quotas. A smooth transition to the marketplace creates a successful launch and support. You treat yourself to a bottle of Dom Perignon at a private launch ceremony. Lovely. Yeah, I think we found Chuck's um, yeah. Chuck's abilities here. Yeah. Manolo and Harvey, two workers specially trained in fragile packing and shipping, turn out to be illegal aliens. Immigration really? officers are at the plant looking for them. Do you offer them a bribe? Let the workers be arrested? Call the company lawyer. Send in the lawyers! Send them in. He advises you to cooperate. You've lost two workers' time in the legal department's fee, and this lawyer is on your side. <laughs> well, at least we know. An entire shift walks out in sympathy with two deported workers during a crucial period on the M&M 4 production line. Do you bust the strike, meet with the workers, bend to their demands, or sit it out? Based on our reputation, our fair and measured approach, our good guy personality, we're going to meet with the workers. You work out a compromise based on good treatment of other workers. Their loyalty to MMC is still strong. Good job. Damn straight. After three years, jobs are getting more intense for Chuck. Time for a mm -hmm. job review and you did a good job. You had pragmatic decision making. You had cost effective solutions. You consistently followed MMC policies. You had good interpersonal skills and you supported and had faith in your people, Chuck. Yes. The economy is fair and you can become potentially the vice president of manufacturing. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go for it. You're remembered for good things and a little bit about that bureau bureaucracy. You got this job, though. <laughs> yes! You're 43. You're making 104000 per year. You got a yes. private office. You got yes. stock options. You have an expense budget. You have a life insurance policy, Buick Company car, and matching furniture. Listen, this is my first time playing this game, but I'm highly, highly invested in Chuck <laughs> now. <laughs> this is great. Good, All right. good, 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 yeah. good. Administration notes that personnel turnover in MMC's home plant is nearly 60% annually. Ooh, but, okay. But productivity seems to be high. What's your response? Let a productive situation persist, discipline the plant manager, Barney Stone, or institute an employee communications plan through Benton Bowles, the VP of Public Relations. Oh, yeah, let's do the communication thing. Yeah, 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 three. That's yeah. right. You, you have a habit of talking to people. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, he's, so yeah. far, it's working. Yeah. The opportunity to air complaints and opinions can take the steam out of this teapot. At worst, Benton Bowles will bore the employees into passivity. Perfect. Thank you, Benton, for being you. Quality control problems surface in the home plant while training new employees to take over for strikers. BT mm. Barnum, Senior VP of Marketing, files an official complaint with the Executive Committee. Oh, Dear. great politics. Ask for a full mm -hmm. report, shut down the production line, proceed and investigate, or fire the quality control manager. Ask for a full report. Okay, full report. You make a slow, cautious inquiry into the situation. Just getting people to think about quality control may improve the situation. You're also delaying, hoping something else arises to distract the executive committee. Exactly. You are caught up in a major political battle Whoa! as different plants compete yeah. for production orders on the M4 line. You decide to build this new line at the home plant, the international plant, or the new plant in the Sun Belt. Let's keep... We made a new plant for this. Uh, for uh, your reference, uh, not just for mm -hmm. you, but for, say, like Europeans, the Sun Belt is uh, roughly uh, the southeast and southwestern portions of the United States. Just kind of like and stretches does it, across. Yeah, does it have like a high manufacturing? Is it known for a high industrial areas? I mean, or... it, it can be. It just depends on like Make... the state and region in question. Sure. Makes sense. Makes sense. God, if I send it to the Sunbelt plant, international, I don't care. It's home and Sunbelt for me. Let's keep it under control. Let's keep it centralized. Home plant. Home plant. Hey, sorry about that, everyone. I, window sounds. I, I didn't properly have DOSBox selected. And... Oh, boop. Greatest control capacity and production capability, as long as earlier problems with quality control and employee turnover 
are satisfactorily resolved. You handled okay, those, wow. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I you did. handled those. Totally, totally. After three years, you did a good job. You had an optimistic yes. outlook. You had a bureaucratic approach to problem solving. They let, now a, they like it. You oh, had an whatever. indecisive manner. Uh -huh. And you had good judgment. Yes. The economy is depressed, but you do have an opening for the senior vice president of operations. Yeah, let's go for it. Worst comes to worst, I don't get it. You're remembered for all good things, Chuck, and you got this job. Yes! 46 years old, you've been here for 16 years, you're making 168000 per year. You've got a private corner op office, you've got more stock options, your expense budget's been doubled. You have a key to the executive washroom. You have a wow. Mercedes company car, and yes! you're enrolled in the executive exercise program. Wow, at 46. Wow, okay. Chuck is a rising star. Let's roll. The M&M 4 hits the market, and suddenly you need more production capacity to respond to a sales spurt. Okay. Do you build an entirely new plant? Do you add a third mm. shift? Do you expand the main plant? Do you add a new foreign plant, or do you subcontract? Subcon subcontract seems like the fastest solution, but we also have no control over it, right? You can really make right. the end of I'm so invested in this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, new domestic plant is just too much. It's too slow. I'm going over. We're going to an expansion would be quicker. A foreign plant that also makes no sense. A third yeah. shift would affect morale. Uh, well, a but third shift could have, clip. like, you adding, like, new employees, too, right? Like, here's, oh, like, a new true. shift. And so, like, here's, like, a line of, like, folks who might just be temporarily employed, and maybe they can be folded back into MMC, like, once the mm -hmm. sales spurt's over and the third shift's, like, we no longer need this third shift, but, hey, let's review these folks. Yeah, but suddenly you need more production capacity yeah third shifts so good but production capacity is both employees and plant let's start with the plant let's expand the man plant expand okay. the main plant. okay expand the main uh, plant three. right right yeah, right, yeah. right 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 mmc's commitment to expansion proves costly when demand slacks off you subdivide and sell the new production buildings as multi-family lodging for workers there we go. Wow, I'm clever. All right, sweet. Yeah. Barney Stone, the newly arrived... What's the economic situation again? Those don't really apply in, like, the question mm -hmm. prompts, but it was depressed. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was fair. Uh, Barney Stone, yeah. the newly arrived national production manager, is held hostage in a Middle Eastern country. Do you launch a raid to recapture Barney? Do you call the State Department? Do you call Barney's family? Or do you run an ad to hire a replacement? Or, ooh, we're going to need a new Barney. Um, we will call the goddamn State Department, too. Who's on first and where is it? State's immediate reaction is to investigate the kidnappers' rights under international oh, law. Government, why? Okay. An economic downturn means that sales orders are down and production costs must be trimmed. You mm -hmm. could cut the production staff. Do you hold staff and absorb losses? Do you go to a reduced work week? Or do you just build inventory? Let's go to a reduced work week. I think that's the most, the best solution. Yeah. A temporary solution, especially appropriate for summer. Some employees refuse to go back full time, so you recommend France as a preferable work environment for them. Nice. After three years, you did an average job, and yeah. you're not remembered for delightful things. You had costly solutions to the problems and a bureaucratic approach to problem solving. Tricky, okay. The economy oh. is fair, but you're not going up. No, I'm not, am I? In fact, I'm going down, technically. I, I was at a 10 level, wasn't I? You sure I? were. Shit. Okay, well, let's... Um... You know what? As crazy as it... No, uh, public... Hmm. Let's try administration. Vice President of Admin. VP of Admin. You don't have the background to manage this department, but you are remembered for your impeccable honesty, consistently following MMC policies, and your resourcefulness. Still, mm. you were edged out by another candidate. Okay. VP of Marketing. VP of Marketing. You're remembered for your good relations with B.T. Barnum and your team Perfect. player instincts. You Chuck you gets back into marketing. All right, let's do it. All right, so you're making 111000 now. 
Got a private office, 1,000 stock options, 10,000 expense budget, life insurance policy, view a company car, but you do have three hour lunches. Well, um, there we go. Lunch, what's, lunches. How long's your lunch break? Three hours. <laughs> Golf. <laughs> Nine holes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Understood. <laughs> Production is way up, and MMC needs to generate more sales. This entails okay. expanding markets. Do you decide mm -hmm. to enter new foreign markets or push domestic sales? Oh, no. Let's do a rapid foreign expansion, number one, for sure. Virgin sales territories offer a test of marketing skills and the three Berlitz language courses you've just signed up for. Be sure you have all your health shots, though, and expect an enduring relationship with jet lag. That's fine. You see an opportunity to broaden the MMC product line into printers. An inventor has approached you with a working prototype that has great potential. It even appears to work. Do you present the opportunity to MMC, pass on the yeah. deal, or develop the opportunity for yourself? One. Nice and one. Nice and simple one. The strategy is accepted and brings production up to capacity. You generate sales increases without adding to the sales force. You get to dance with the president's only child at the company party. Ooh, nice. As a result of extensive travel, you are laid up with infectious hepatitis. Uh, so I didn't get my shots, clearly. For recovery, you choose total rest for six weeks or work at home convalescence for 12 weeks. We gotta show them that I'm still willing to work. Work at home convalescence. You stay in touch with events but exert little influence. During your prolonged recuperation, you get to know your family again and find that you like them. Oh, sweet! Good! Malcolm Farnsworth III, the president, storms oh, into your no. office. Startup oh, of the m and 4 has been delayed and you swear that Malcolm Farnsworth 1 and 2, the first and the second, are in the room helping him yell at you. Your defense is... It's manufacturing's fault. You don't know. Tank respons take responsibility or the delay is not apparent. Jesus. Okay. It's not... Okay. I have to... I have to take... I'm going to go with my... I'm going to explain my logic here. I have to take responsibility. If I blame someone else, it's not going to be... It's not going to go well when the president says that. He wants accountability. Me saying I don't know is a quick way to get my ass fired. And the delay is not apparent? That is like... That is like telling him that he's 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 wrong, right? So, so we have to take responsibility and let the chips fall where they may. All right. Chuck takes responsibility. Nice gesture, but your motion is denied. Reviewing the situation, Malcolm Varnsworth concludes that no one person could be responsible. You are asked to prepare a contingency plan ASAP as a vote of confidence. Oh, okay. It's not as bad as I thought it could be. After three years, you did a good job. You provided MMC with new products. You will be remembered for the healthy attention paid to your personal life. You had an open manner of addressing problems. The economy is fair, and you could potentially become the senior VP of marketing. Yeah, okay, let's do it. You're remembered for acting in an aggressive, decisive oh, manner. You're remembered God. for your team player instincts, but you're also remembered for publicly criticizing the MMC product line. I love how this game reminds members <laughs> everything that I did. Like, dude, I was young. I was 34. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Those people are like fucking gone now, damn it. <laughs> it was the MM3. It was a piece of shit. Uh, we're we yeah, we have the far now. better. Yeah. First Fleet, you do have the job, Chuck. Good. You're 52 years old. You've been with MC for 22 years, making 174000 wow. Uh, you've got private corner office, 10000 in stock options, 20000 expense budget, executive washroom key, Mercedes company car, and a country club membership. Ooh. All right, baby, let's roll. You are involved in strategy planning for a major new product introduction, the Mad Computer. You choose to confer with Malcolm Farnsworth III. Brooks DuPont and Doug MacArthur are two prominent individuals whom you haven't yeah. really been introduced to in the company. Uh, all of the above or none of the above. All of the above. Let's let's get a feedback from all of them. Dipl diplomatic way of doing it yourself, particularly since resolution by committee is usually non-committal at best. Mm-hmm. The senior VP vice presidents of finance and operations struggle for the executive vice president spot as Brooks Dupont approaches retirement. There's your answer for who Brooks Dupont is or was. Oh, okay, in this case. senior VP of finance. Okay. Do you decide to choose sides? Stay neutral. Start your own coalition, or alternatively, tentatively support the president. Oh, let's just be a complete and utter sycophant. Let's attentively support Malcolm Farnsworth III. 
Loyalty, baby. Demonstrates little initiative or ambition, but loads of discreet intelligence. Besides, Malcolm Farnsworth came from marketing, mm. and lightning has been known to strike twice. You've noticed Malcolm looks a little like Zeus these days. Yes! Oh, wow, okay. The time has come to introduce the new line of mad computers. At the major product introduction, who do you use as a spokesperson? The president? The executive vice president, Brooks Dupont, the senior VP of operations, or yourself. Ooh. Mad computers. Okay. Major product introduction. Who do you use as a spokesperson? Like, um... You are the, currently, of course, the, the honcho of marketing. Yeah. I want to say... I'm I'm tempted to say the president, but that last kind of interaction kind of like taught me that like you're you're not being super ambitious, right? You're being diplomatic, but you're not being ambitious. And if the goal is to take Malcolm's spot, right? Uh-huh. Let's let's try it. Let's go with four. Me. I'll do it. You better be good. Get over the program. But if you are, the executive suite is within reach. Don't let your mind wander to color schemes and furniture. That's why God made interior decorators. Damn straight. All right, come on. Let's do this. It's money, baby. You did a good job after three years. You remember for your good interpersonal skills, pleasing Malcolm Farnsworth and your independence. Oh, yes, okay. The economy is expanding, and, uh, Ooh. hey, bud, guess yeah. what? You could yeah. potentially shoot up. Yeah. Senior VP of Finance and Admin? Sure. Maybe you could just become executive VP, sure. Or maybe you could become president. Now, I'm really tempted to go for president, super um, gone for, uh, go going for it, but there's a lot of things that aren't determined just yet. I should probably cut my f teeth as an executive VP. Okay. Oh, wait, hold up a second. I am a VP, though, aren't I? Yeah, technically. Yeah, yeah you're of the, marketing. Like this, yeah, the senior VP of marketing. But not executive. I know there's like tiers of VP, which is you, crazy. You, 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 you know, the job option president's up there. Yeah. Shit. You must have handled yourself very well at that last job, and apparently okay. lightning can't struck twice. Yeah, oh, you know what? To the vi like, yeah, exactly. Let's let's uh, strike the iron while hot. Let's go for president. Welcome, Chuck. I believe you know everyone on the board of directors. Many of us wouldn't mind changing places with you, a nominee for MMC's presidency. We'd like to review your very interesting career here. Board of directors always likes to look at a nominee's positive traits, and you had many. Chuck, in referring, reviewing your files and talking to your peers, you're remembered for, at the top here. Your independence, your sense of fair play, your cost-effective solutions, and the healthy attention paid to your personal life. Interesting, okay. Now, in our review, the board also came across some unpleasant incidents in your mm. record, such as costly solutions to the problems, alienating senior management, publicly criticizing the MSC product line, and your indecisive manner. Okay. The board must now consult on your nomination to the executive suite. While the board takes a break, perhaps Alfred Lazarus, our newest board member, can show you the executive suite. Alfred says he is impressed with your background. Oh boy. And that was a brief, like, blip of it, but mm -hmm. emulation being what it is. <laughs> there it goes. As you mm -hmm. return to the boardroom, Alfred, Alfred pulls you into a small conference room. He compliments your style and offers to double your salary if you'll come to his company, National Transport, as executive VP. What do you say? Wow. This is before the board has come back with, like, their decision. Wow, this is like... do you? Oh, this is a... Okay, whoever designed this game, this is smart, right? Do you take the uncertain choice, which is higher rewards, or do you take the guaranteed choice, although it will shoot any chance of you attaining that top spot? Let's be... Let's be a company man. I will say respectfully, no, no thank you. Congratulations. The executive suite is yours for the taking. Continue unmolested to the board of directors. Chuck Hemsworth, president of Mighty Micro Co Computer Micro, Micro Machine. The you did it! Chuck Hemsworth made it to the top, Inferno. Oh my god, this game is amazing. 
How did you find out about it? The board hopes you will enjoy oh. your new offices. The compensation committee has tried to make your compensation package as attractive as the view from the executive suite. Let's see how accounting evaluates your current worth. Annual Please. salary of 528000 personal expense budget of 40000 stock options 200000 title of president, cash value of life insurance is 500000 executive suite office 200000 company car, reserve garage parking, other perks, your work status is in the executive suite, you have a family life, and your current age is 55. Total current value, $3,018,000. $1982. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. That's great. I love how they value family, family. It makes sense, right? I mean, they'd be worried that someone who had no family life would probably burn out, right? So, as for how I knew about this game, learned about this game, mm -hmm. I couldn't say. I, I first started like I first showed this off to folks back in 2012. Mm -hmm. It's been a decade, I think. It's I been broadcasted a decade. like that then, and I've known about the game before that. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe I may still have like discs for this in my attic, although I may not at this point. I couldn't say. Wow, that was incredibly... Chuck, you better hurry oh. home to pack. You don't want to miss the board's annual European retreat. We leave tomorrow at 10. Dashing through the airport, you pick up the Wall Street Journal. No one could miss this front page article. Chuck Hemsworth named MMC head. Chuck Hemsworth has been named president of Mighty Microcomputer Corporation according to announcement released by the board of directors yesterday. Mr. Hemsworth is the unanimous selection wow. to occupy MMC's heralded executive suite. The new president joins the short list of employees to work their way up the company to the top position. MMC has a firm policy of promoting from within, and Mr. Hemsworth was given the nod for work done on MMC's MMM4 and Mad Systems introductions, which revolutionized the industry. This is the best flight to Europe ever! Yeah, damn straight! Wow. Flannel Fun and your friends at MMC wish you well in the real world or on your next attempt at the executive suite. Congratulations, Inferno Connect. Second try. Second try indeed. Wow, that uh, that was thoroughly enjoyable. Wow, for an impromptu um, <laughs> conversation, this was this this made this was great. All right, yeah, you uh, you 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 weathered the storm of 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 marketing being close to you, so hopping into something else, and then you weathered a storm of needing to hop out of, like, that and back into marketing. And, uh... Yeah, it's... I, I really love... I mean, there were some, um, you know, factors that really helped as far as economy booming when it needed to. There was a couple setbacks, right? But nothing as major as when I was in the mail room and a maintenance worker. That's really... That's, um... Yeah, that's... That was really, really fun. It made you, like, kind of think about stuff, and I wonder... Hmm, it really encourages additional playthroughs, right? Because, like, I, you wonder if you could kind of get to that stop, top spot in, like, a really weaselly political way, uh, which I have a feeling, from the depth of this game, uh, probably. So that's pretty great. Note that you can also modify the difficulty of the game as well by choosing how Ooh. your character is and character generation. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And yeah, and uh, Daikami made a really good point. I'm very glad I decided to strike while the iron was hot, right? Because who knows what would have happened. You could have become like... executive VP and then, oops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something, Something happened. happened. Yeah, exactly. There you exactly. go, tumbling down. Yeah, off I go. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, thank you so, so much, um, Grimith. This was an absolute blast. Yeah. Is this something that you'd be interested in trying again? Oh, absolutely. Let's, yeah, let's try a different approach. Yes, let's do this again. Right. Yeah, I didn't want to assume, but I'm totally down to try this right. again. No, I, th I thought I'd just check. Uh, I'm going to take a break mm -hmm. to uh, grab a beverage and I'll take do the some same. medicine. Yeah. Allows Inferno to stretch as well and call his parents excitedly and say, well, yeah. you know what I just did? <laughs> <laughs> I was, I became president of a business simulator <laughs> from 1982. <laughs> All right. Be right back, everyone. <laughs>
Burnout's going to do hard, intense yeah. research on. <laughs> I am. Oh, shit. I can't, well, because I can definitely see why this is, I mean, it's fun to see, especially like, now I see, now I understand why you were so excited where I'm like, I have no idea about this game, right? Because it's good to see people's first impressions on this stuff and the decisions that they make. It's pretty yeah. great. Yes, I've, I have ambushed a number of people in mean, over the course of my life with this game before. <laughs> It's been it's been a few years since I have. <laughs> I I love how it's like you ambush them with the nineteen eighty two business. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, it's like hey, hey Inferno, like are you free yeah. today? Like how free? Like is you ever free? Like you yeah. free? yeah, I'm cool. And then bam, now now there's just a new fan of the game. You're very insidious. You're very clever, Grimeth. I love it. Yes, that's that's me. Very very clever. Mm -hmm. Doors, but. By the way, I, Inferno mm -hmm. Canuck is someone who takes an extensive roleplay approach to video games. I, I he's did. been, well, he's not much of a local recorder anymore. He not broadcasts anymore. things, but he's been, like, sharing, like, his gameplay footage with the internet for how many years, bud? Oh, over 10 years now. Yep. Oh, yeah. Like, 11 years? Coming, on, coming up on 12. Yeah. A long mm -hmm. time. It was a yeah. it was a start with uh with Total War, right? Yeah, yeah, to very yeah, very good memory. Yeah, Total War games have been switched to some RPGs and did all sorts of stuff. But yeah, I'm I'm a giant nerd that really loves uh, immersive story based stuff. So I like to uh, put myself in the mindset Let's see, uh, <laughs> of the character. My first official Let's Play video, May eleventh, twenty ten, Rome Total War Rise of Persia mod. Oh god, that takes me back. Yeah, so there we go. Twelve years. Holy moly. Twelve Time years. Time flies. I just started a couple of months after I did. Uh, mm -hmm. While I'm thinking about it before we get started with the new run, uh, uh, how you how you feeling about the uh, the remaster of Rome Total War? You have any thoughts or opinions on it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I want to be pretty. I mean, it's it's good that they. Re I mean, <laughs> graphical remaster. I don't know. I never played it. Because that was I a still word have. salad right there. <laughs> it was. It was. I was. I was. I was. Um. I was channeling Chuck there for a moment. I wasn't out of character. <laughs> that was real role playing. Well, right you see, it was very synergistic in its approaches. Mm. No. Um. It's uh, oh, Rome Total synergy. War remaster is is fine. I'm sure it, it, if it opens up other people to play the game, great. But uh, I haven't played it Rome Total War in many years to come. I've been more, I, I've I've gotten sucked into like their newer titles, um, you know, Total War Warhammer and that sort of thing. So, sure. um, yeah, it's fine. I guess. I care more about mod support, so if it had, I, I know they said they're going to be supporting, like, all the mods, so, yeah, well, neutral is my response, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, neutral, why not? Mm. Uh, and I enjoy being a firebrand and potentially inciting uh, Inferno Connect to violence. Uh, oh. It is, uh, I, like, I like instigating him with, uh, with prompts and cues. Uh, something mm -hmm. that I keep in my back pocket for, like, in case Inferno ever really upsets me, which he hasn't, but if he ever really does, I'll just, like, lean in real close and just, mm -hmm. like, like, sultrily, like, whisper in his ear, Stolaris. What? <laughs> Motherfucker, I knew you were gonna say it. You know, you know, okay, you, you just started something, because, dear God... <laughs> Goddamn YouTube is recommending me all these like new DLC for Stellaris and Steam is like, oh, it's on sale. And I'm like, it can go burn in a fire. That game, I have a game has never been so dead to me as Stellaris was. See, you just have to say that word. And there's, a, there's something in my brain, a fuse has spurred and sputtered. And now I'm compelled to just unleash some, some horrible nerd rage on that travesty of a game anyway all right <laughs> i'm calm i'm calm i'm calm the normally like gentle soul that is inferno <laughs> just yeah. pretty happy go lucky but i just fuck snap at the word just at that ignited game. like <laughs> mm -hmm. like tinder baby oh. like tinder <laughs> the little inferno just for us <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm in the fireplace, and you just set me on Burned fire. And fucking firecrackers degrees. just went.
We'll shove them in the fire and breathe in all the flaming. Start warp jump gates. <laughs> I remember having another way of space travel. <laughs> Why would you remove content from your game? <laughs> How young can you make your character? I don't believe they can be younger than 18, but maybe they can go down to 16. It's been a few years since I went through this game. Yeah. All right. All right. Executive Suite. Welcome to Mighty Microcomputer Corporation. We're starting a uh, new yeah. career. Now, do you want to mm. reuse this Chuck you just made or made someone mm. else? No, I, 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 it'd be pretty cool, but let's make someone else. I have, I have an idea in mind over the break, so let's, let's give this okay. a shot. Try to relax. Uh, what's your mm -hmm. first name? We're gonna say Mark. Mark. Mm-hmm. Good. I like it. What's your last name? Uh, we're gonna say uh, Antonio. Mark Antonio. Now, mm -hmm. was that Mark with a C or Mark with a K? Uh, Do I need to restart the game? I was imagining K, so okay. it's all good. All yeah. right, Mark Antonio. You always just started thinking of Mark Anthony, which, you know, thought I'd I was. This is actually, I'm going to do something like a young Mark Anthony who's just, like, brutal, good leader, Anthony. but very selfish. And we'll see if he makes it or not. All right. Where's uh, Mark Antonio from? Antonio. Uh, we'll say from the south. Okay. Hometown and state. Uh, hometown will be, uh, oh, God, let's make him from... Well, let's make him from Florida, because Florida is like the boot of, <laughs> of uh, it, the United States. It's a penis. It's not a boot. Italy's the boot. Florida's <laughs> well, it's a even penis. even better for an ancient <laughs> Roman. If it's a penis, that's even better. Oh, my God. It's so phallically symbolic. Okay. We'll say um, Miami-Dade in Florida. Miami, Florida. Mm -hmm. All that instead of Miami-Dade County. Growing mm -hmm. up in the South, it. where did you go to college? We're going to say City College. City College. Mm -hmm. What was the name of your school, Antonio? Uh, just, uh, I don't know, College of Miami, we'll call it. <laughs> Miami U. Z. Miami University. Yeah, Miami U. Yeah. What'd you study at Miami University? We're going we're gonna to go with girls. Girls? He studied girls. Now, just like your character did last time, did you do mm -hmm. great and score all the time? Yes! Yes, Marco Antonio would score all the time. Delightful. Did you go on to graduate school, or had you had enough education after Miami University? Oh, he's done with that education, so we're gonna actually say toured Europe again. Okay, toured Europe. How many years of prior work experience do you have, Mark Antonio? We're, we're not gonna say one, we're not gonna say five, we're gonna go in the middle, we're gonna say three. Three. So on the sports page of Giants 1, if you are a sports enthusiast, what interests you? Competitive drinking. Competitive drinking. How old are you, Mark Antonio? We're going to make him much younger. We're going to say 22. 22? Mm-hmm. Male? Male, yep. Divorce, single, or married? We're going to say... Oh, at 22, as messed up as it is, let's say divorced. Yeah. Well, not messed up. I don't mean judge any it, 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 it was a torrid love affair in Europe. You exactly. don't know. <laughs> it was like a six-month marriage. That was the whole I That was the whole I was imagining. Yeah. Divorced. All yeah. right. After all this talk, I'm feeling very kind of all your application. How would you describe yourself, Mark Antonio? Blind ambition, technician, party person, work before pleasure, work as a hobby. Um, party person. Well, we'll make him very amiable. Very amiable. He thinks he's very amiable. He thinks he is, yeah. There's no question, Mark. You make an impressive applicant. The economy is depressed. You've got twos and ones coming in. Okay. Okay. We won't... I, as much as I'd love to have him start out in the mail room, let's give him a, a bit of a... Oh, let's start him out as a... Um, an assembler. That seems interesting. Okay. Congratulations, Mark. You have the job of assembler. 18000 per year, own desk, medical plan, and one-week vacation. Mm -hmm. You are assigned to an online production crew during a very boring wiring job. That's not online as in on the internet, but on a production line, everyone. Like a production line, yeah. In this position, do you concentrate on your work, getting another position, or the people around you? 
Let's let's concentrate on the people around us. I want to be very manipulative in this playthrough. Yeah. You are very friendly and well liked, but not headed for promotion until your work habits improve. Better to have the boards wired than your personality. Hmm. You discover okay. a cost saving wiring technique in your assembly job. A quick estimate indicates possible savings of ten percent per unit. You tell Frank Harmon, the VP of manufacturing, other workers, or no one, but use your new technique. Well, we'll let Frank turn in now, for sure. You've chosen the best course to change assembly policy. Your astuteness is noted by Frank, although he never actually admits an assembler improved productivity. Of course not. Nothing's wrong, but you just okay. made it. You fixed it, An engineer, it, right? Brighton Star, asks you to assemble a toy rocket ship he has designed for his son. You were discovered working on the project by Frank Herman. Do you blame the engineer, offer to make one for Frank Herman's son too, or go into the toy business? <laughs> Oh, we're totally going to blame the engineer. <laughs> Machiavellian. We're going to be Machiavellian. Now this. Brighton and Frank are both angry with you. Great, good. The spate of memos awesome. results in open war between the departments, and you are trapped in no man's land. You did an average Great. job. Yeah, you remember for your hearty socializing, uh, befriending Doug MacArthur and Frank Herman. You had cost-effective solutions, and you had poor interpersonal skills. Hardy socializing and poor interpersonal skills. This yes. This is very interesting. It, yes, because you chose to just... What do you like? Just as soon as he catches you, it was the engineer's fault. <laughs> Economy is fair, and you could perhaps become a skilled assembler. Do we really want to work him as an assembler, or do we want to pivot? Yeah, okay, skilled assembler. Let's give it a shot. You got it. Great. Twenty-three thousand own desk, two-week vacation, medical plan, and your first MMC keychain. I shall cherish it forever. Rumor of a temporary work slowdown hits concurrently with an offer from the Assembler Union local to become an organizer. Management has made a strong stand against union organization, but layoffs are fueling the membership drive. Do you take the union offer to protect your job, or decline the union offer? Take the union offer to protect my own job. You've increased security at your present level while antagonizing management, Advancement will be more, dif more difficult. You consider Jimmy Hoffa's career and take a low-profile organizer approach. Inferno, Ooh. do you know the name Jimmy Hoffa? Oh, I know Jimmy Hoffa extremely well. Yeah, well, <laughs> personally. Yeah. Really, those are no. the first. The gym, <laughs> sir. Yeah. yeah no. Oh, yeah. Me and Jimmy go way back. Did competitive no, 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 drinking sir. with him. <laughs> I know of Jimmy Hoffa for sure. Absolutely. Um, uh, the, uh, oh yeah, no, it's, he's, he's very infamous. He was, I know, and actually, I recently also watched The Irishman, which is a pretty decent, if not long movie. So yeah, I know Jimmy Hoffa. Yeah. All right. Management re reacts negatively to your union involvement, as management does. Mm -hmm. They pressure you on performance and productivity. What's your reaction to mollify them? Militant stands for your rights or ignore management. Oh, let's, oh, I, 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 I see a path here. Uh, instigator militant stance i mean all right yeah cap yeah. peasant thank you for that mm -hmm. i am interested in your personal care products and maybe mark antonio is too you mm -hmm. refuse to be pushed and use your influence to protect your position unfortunately you will not be on the top of the list for advances at mmc management members start muttering why do you think they call it the soviet union oh uh, yes Oh, 80, oh my god, 82. Yeah, that's one heck of a thing. Yeah, I love Sylvia this. Platt, a continuing education teacher, wants you to publish a somewhat candid paper on working conditions at MMC and the local paper, the Evening Gazette. Do you agree, decline, ask company permission, or use a pen name? You know what? We have to be a little bit clever. We'll use a pen name. <laughs> Marco Anthony. <laughs> Marco Anthony. Yeah, I'm sure it's not this Mark Antonio. It's this Mark Anthony. I'm sure it's completely different. No, he probably called himself Julius Caesar. Let's not get carried away. It's only the Evening Gazette. Besides, Doonesbury takes the real political heat. Mark, so. after one year, you did a poor job. You acted counter the management's union policy. You alienated some people. <laughs> You had overly cautious decision making, but damn it, you stood up for yourself. I did. The economy is fair, and uh, you're not advancing in the assembler branch. Okay, forget assembly. Screw this. Let's go into sales. All right, you're remembered for your poor interpersonal skills, and you don't get the job. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, fine. Fine, I'll be a draftsman. All right, you got the job. 20000 for a year, your own desk, medical plan, one week vacation, a picture of the president, and your second MMC keychain. Beautiful. I'm collecting them like heads. You, you feel overworked, but are pressed to finish drawings for redesigned MMM2 microcomputer casing. Time mm -hmm. management in this busy period is the key to finishing on schedule. You decide to work harder, work longer, socialize. I want to do something, I mean... My instincts are, but let's let's see what happens if we socialize. I'll show you bad interpersonal skills. Socializing relieves tensions and makes contacts, but doesn't improve work performance. Your attitude and conversation is a lot livelier than those sw slaving 20 hours a day on the project. <laughs> You're so entertaining that you may be invited to the executive suite to, in to entertain a decidedly unamused audience. While working hard on the casing redesign, you've come to feel isolated from contact with company management. But today, the president, Malcolm Farnsworth III, stops to talk with you on his annual tour. You ask him how the company is doing, comment on their weather, or invite him to the Thursday night poker game. Let's, let's just go nuts. Let's invite him to the Thursday night poker game. Strong but questionable impression. Malcolm declines with a laugh, claiming golf is his game. You resolve to play miniature golf once a week for the rest of your life. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> MMC offers you the opportunity to participate in a computer graphics test. Con Edison has chosen you based on your MM2 work. You say, yes. No. Request to speak with the senior VP of operations, Doug MacArthur. Let's not go nuts. Let's just say yes. Yes. You do yes. well in the test and are now considered the MMC expert. This allows Ooh. you to establish a new technology niche. You fall behind mm. in normal work and must put in overtime. You dare not complain. Overtime is considered a perk at MMC. Yeah. You did an average job. You neglected responsibilities. You did hardy socializing. Your there aggressive go. go-getter approach. The economy is fair, and perhaps you can become an engineer in training. Yeah, let's do that. Engineer in training, for You're sure. You're remembered for your aggressive go-getter approach, and you have the job. You're making 25000 a year. You have your own desk, a two-week vacation, a medical plan, and your third keychain. Beauty. Let's roll. As a new engineer, you are sub subject to the whims of unorganized project managers. A last-minute assignment conflicts with a special seminar MMC has enrolled you in. Your project manager, Harriet Nance, tells you to handle the situation. So what do you do? Delay the work, skip the seminar, or take the work to the seminar? Oh. Let's take the work to the seminar. Tight, difficult scheduling, but you can get it all done. Harriet is impressed enough to give you a pair of running shoes and a year's supply of gum. Oh boy, free gum for a year! Absolutely. You have the chance to carpool with three top engineers residing in your new neighborhood. Everyone drives one week a month. You own a two-seat English sports car. You may choose to buy a new car, offer to pay for gas, decline carpool, or suggest a car convoy. Buy a new car! Your accommodating purchase leads to solid contacts and a lot of time behind the wheel. Engineer trainees are expected to be expert chauffeurs as well. Mm -hmm. With time, you have become a valued engineer trainee. You are requested to select an engineering team to work with on the M&M3 project. You select the best engineers, the worst engineers, or work alone. Best engineers. The best engineers. Mm-hmm. You learn invaluable secrets about your trade from the engineering elite. You also live with the name Rookie for two years and fetch more than your share of donuts. Oh, boy. All after right. one year, mm -hmm. you still live with a name after an extra year. You did a good job. <laughs> Aggressive go-getter approach and team player instincts. The economy is expanding, and uh, we got some fours up here. Salesman, yeah. marketing assistant, trainee financial analyst, or senior accounting clerk. Let's go trainee financial analyst. Analyst. All right, you got the job. Yeah. Thirty-two thousand. Mm. Your own desk, two-week vacation, access to that wide area telephone service, and a picture of the president. Nice, wonderful. Uh, Pat Ivers, a college classmate, recommends buying out Meld Design Co. based on private information about a breakthrough in circuit development. Do you recommend acquiring Meld, letting the opportunity pass, or exploring it further? You know what, as Wise decision will be explored further, but let's make Mark hasty and much like XCOM, let's acquire as much mail as possible. XCOM 2012. 
Gambling on a dynamic company is in the spirit which founded MMC. You seem to be following in the founder's footsteps. Excellent. Carrie Hoffman, the VP of Finance, recommends against the acquisition of Meld Design Co., despite expert analyst reports to the contrary. Do you approach and question Carrie Hoffman in private, explore it further, or have the research company send reports to the senior VP of Finance, Jason Parlay? Let's be a complete asshole, number three. You are called into a meeting with an irate Jason Parlay and a smoldering Carrie Hoffman. They don't mean, like, attractive. <laughs> no, sensual. no. You, you invoke more like, it's more like Stellaris Inferno smoldering. Yeah. Gotcha. You invoke a little-known MMC codicil. Financial analyst trainees are to be seen, not heard. Damn it. <laughs> seen, not heard. Yeah. Elaine Penser, the editor of Circuit News Monthly, a key trade publication, asks for financial help. You have inside information that MMC is going to acquire the Meld Design Co. Do you tell Elaine, make a stock purchase for him, or look for other alternatives? Oh, let's be shady and make a stock purchase for him. That's very illegal. That's insider training. Let's do it. Welcome training. to the world of collusion. You'll mm -hmm. have an opportunity to meet all sorts of interesting people, like federal investigators, when your maneuvers are discovered. If they're discovered. <laughs> Obviously, things discovered. aren't going your way at MMC, Mark. Trepidation, you open the top envelope in your morning mail. Well, you've been fired. Um... You did some bad did things there. Primarily the illicit, like, insider trading. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, who'd have thought? But I also, wow. Okay. 26. 26 and, uh, <laughs> well, probably going to prison. <laughs> maybe just probably a slap on the wrist. Maybe, so maybe. Maybe I can blame it on an engineer. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> It was the engineer! <laughs> you got your whole life ahead of you. Maybe you should have gone into the toy business. Who could say? <laughs> oh, maybe. God. Yeah, I should have gone into the toy business. Absolutely. Hit the Hit road, the road Jack. You wanna, Don't you come back. You want to give uh, Mark uh, another another shot? Yes. Okay. Yes, I do. Let's Yeah, let's just do the same guy, but let's make different choices. <laughs> All right. We, you have our resume on file. Ah, yes, Mark. Ah, yes. MMC Rivers, you, you have an interesting resume on file. The yes, economy is depressed, and we're back here. Let's go... Let's go with the sales training. I want to focus on sales the entire time, if possible. All right. Own desk, medical plan, one-week vacation, and a keychain. You mm -hmm. attend MMC's introductory sales trainee seminar. Viewers may recognize the solid name of Bucky Carter, a salesman. Invites you to gain some practical experience rather than just this book learning by having a few drinks with the boys. You study oh, absolutely. Go drinking with the boys. Oh, right? go drinking with the boys. Drinking. This is, Here we go. This is my major. This is <laughs> yes, it is. The drinks go down easily, and you are quickly accepted as one of the gang. The camaraderie will be remembered long after the evening's lesson is forgotten. Nice. Bucky Carter suggests continuing the evening at a local house of ill repute, Big mm. Lil's Little Palace of Pleasure. Do you go along or go back to room and study before sleep? Oh, come on. Go along for sure. Go big or go home. Got a Cleopatra in there somewhere? Exactly. You're certainly out for a good time. Management is less than pleased with your state of the morning class, especially yeah. when you show up with your writing arm in a sling as a result of backslapper's syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good job, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, woo, woo. But Bucky Carter, now MMC's leading salesman, calls in with a priority request. Dynamic mm. Industries wants to make the largest purchase in MMC history. Closing the M&M 2 line, allowing the M&M 3 line to come out immediately. All Bucky needs is exact availability and shipping information, but the regional sales manager, Jack Stark, is absent from the office. Do you provide that info yourself, inform Bucky that Jack Stark is absent, or try to contact Jack Stark? Hmm... Let's provide the information ourselves. Okay. You display independence, but this is the largest sale ever. Even Jack Stark needs advice on this order. Somehow you relay information from an outdated <laughs> file. A file that bears more than a little resemblance to your career at the moment. 
You did a poor job, Mark. <laughs> you had good relations with Salesforce. You had the perfect sales yeah. personality. You, but you provided ineffective solutions to problems. Mm -hmm. You were independent, at least. The economy is fair, and you're fired. <laughs> wow. Causes for wow. this party include a tendency to tip the bottle, providing ineffective solutions to problems. Ah, uh, yeah, you're, you, yeah, get the fuck out of here, Mark. <laughs> Mark Anthony wouldn't do great in the corporal world for some reason. All right. I, I, that, was, that was short. We gotta give this another shot. We gotta give this another shot. You Start a new career. Ah, oh, yes, Mark, if MC oh, Mark, remembers yeah. you. Yeah, the I'm economy sure you remains depressed. Okay, we're doing sales again. Sales training. Okay. Yes. Here you are, same as it was Mark Antonio. You attended Perfect. MMC's introductory sales training <laughs> seminar. Okay, we're gonna do go drinking with the boys. Okay. Yes. Yes. Oh yeah. Ill repute. Let's do that. Go along. Mm hmm Yes. Yes. Good. Okay. Wonderful. And okay. This this was the critical moment. <laughs> this was the moment that we knew Mark fucked up. <laughs> yeah. <So>. Well. <laughs> we're going to just simply say he's out of the office. Number two. He's not here. Bucky wants Jack's phone number or your head. Commission dollars have already made Bucky delirious with power. Return to the option listing and indicate your next move. You've encountered an option choice that actually sends you so back. Oh, well then I guess we're going to try and contact Jack Stark. The crisis takes a new twist. Jack Stark is out of the office with his mistress. Oh. Applying communications techniques last seen during the Inquisition... You wrench the telephone number from Gertie, Shaq Stark's secretary. Yeah, you must decide to either call, have the secretary call, or delay mm. Bucky further. Let's have Gertie call. Gertie calls at your instruction. Jack arrives in the office 45 minutes later, and without another word says, Let's do this thing. You reply how happy you are to see him. An unspoken trust develops between the two of you. Perfect. Oh, this is exactly. You did a good job this yeah. time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good relations with the sales force. You had the perfect sales mm. personality. You had an open manner of addressing problems. You had resourcefulness, and you made friends with senior sales management. Yes. The economy Secret. is fair, Secret. and uh, yes. Where would you like to go next? Uh, I guess the closest thing that has anything to do with sales or interpersonal skills is customer service clerk. So let's be a CSC. Okay. You're remembered for a tendency to tip the bottle, but you're also <laughs> remembered for good things. You got the job. Yeah. 23000 a year, two-week vacation, your own desk, working telephone, and a keychain. Bucky mm -hmm. Carter, your good friend, a key salesman, asks mm -hmm. you to find him a copy of a report as you are preparing to leave for an evening engagement with an oft-prevailed-upon love interest. Mmm... Leave. Fuck you, Bucky. Hmm. We'll leave. Yeah. We'll I thought spat out my out. drink. That happened quick. That's, that's Mark <laughs> Antonio for you. <laughs> Listen, I got Cleopatra at home. Uh, you, you'd you understand, Bucky. Must be a truly pressing engagement to ignore Bucky Carter completely. Of course, your romantic interest may very well be worth it. And better be, because you have almost surely alienated Bucky. Oh, too bad for Bucky. You're in the middle of a conversation with an irate customer when Sam Danger, Vice President of Marketing, comes to your desk demanding a weekly report. Do you hang up on the customer, <laughs> put the customer on hold, pretend you don't see Sam, or cry? Cry is hilarious, but let's put the customer on hold. The steam coming through the receiver makes the telephone too hot to handle. You hand Sam Danger the report, squirt some water on the phone, and get your ear burned by the worst language since Woody Hayes lost his last Rose Bowl. Don't worry about it. Sam walks away mm -hmm. with an understanding smile. Wonderful. For the first time in weeks, you have a conflict and an evening activity. You must decide between your romantic interest's birthday, mm -hmm. the company's softball game, drinks with the group product manager, working late. As much as I like to keep going with the romantic interest, remember, Mark here got divorced at 22. So I think he's Mark very is hot also and really cold. into drinks. <laughs> yeah, but exactly. So we're going with number three. You become a charter member of the Old Boys Club. This includes yeah. an initiation rite of liberating a worm from a tequila bottle. The next morning, you ask the worm to drive to work. 
You did an average job. Uh, you maintained humor, even in a crisis, but you rubbed Bucky Carter the wrong way. Yeah, I sure did. Economy is fair, and we got threes here. I guess we'll have to go with Personnel Clerk. Not personnel Clerk, that's three, Grimoth. You remember for your resourcefulness, you got the job, 24000 a year, your own desk, two-week vacation, jacket, telephone. Telephone, baby. A junior accountant Bernard comes into your cubicle after work hours one evening. He bluntly offers you $200 for five minutes alone with his employee file. You respond, let's see the money. Here's the file. Keep the money. No. What do you want it for? What do you want it for? Bernard declines to answer, claiming it's a private matter. You explain the file in this case is closed. Mm-hmm. Interesting. During standard preparation of employee W-2 forms, tax stuff, you discover the personnel manager's nephew, Oscar, earns twice the normal rate for an accounts receivable clerk. You lower his rate, ignore it, or talk to Simon Woodstock, the personnel manager who uh, oh, interviewed you. Oh, let's just be a total rat. Three. Three. His nephew. Oh, okay. oh, wait, yeah. yeah. Oh, wait, oh, sorry. <laughs> That's the actual nephew. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, maybe we can bribe him. Yeah, let's do it. Can I talk to him? Yeah, let's talk to him. Simon states the matter is confidential and advised you to imitate a discreet circuit. Whoever told you the world was fair anyway. Hmm. Too true. Oscar invites you for drinks after work with his uncle, Simon, and the VP of Finance, Carrie Hoffman. You interested? Yes. I know, right? You had me at drinks. <laughs> a good choice if you have good personal relationship with these fellows. You discuss commodities and career futures very optimistically. You did a good job. You stayed out of office politics. You had an open manner mm -hmm. of addressing problems. You had good interpersonal skills, and you had hearty socializing. Oh, the economy yeah, is fair, hard. and uh, maybe you'd be interested in some Fords. Oh, absolutely. Let's be salesmen. You made friends with senior sales management, but you rubbed Bucky Carter the wrong way. Nevertheless, you're now a salesman. 31,000, own desk, two-week vacation, travel and entertainment allowance, access to the Watts line. The regional sales manager, Jack Stark, arranges your lunch with three key clients. Mm -hmm. Alan Greenbuck, Analog Concerns, Derek Clayton, Superior Electronics, Andrew Grevy, Dynamic Industries. Returning to the office, you report on lunch to Jack Stark. Your car allowance is upgraded. What would you like to choose for a vehicle? Buick, Cadillac, Mercedes. See, now, I, I know the tiers of cars here, so let's not go too nuts. Let's go with a Buick. Okay, a Buick. Nice of you to go easy on the company's cash flow. Okay, mm -hmm. chat. Don't play along or I'm removing you. You get a call from your old friend Derek Clayton about a major order. He wants to see you in half an hour. Jack Stark is out. The secretary forgot to take Derek's company or phone number. What is Derek's company's name, Inferno? Shit. Oh. <laughs> Dynamic Industries. Forgetting your customers' companies is a fatal flaw for a salesperson. Oh, you dear. try every Derek Clayton in the phone book to no avail. When Jack Stark returns, you're instructed to apply for a position in another department. Two years, and you're out of here. Wow, at least I'm not fired. Google and your <laughs> unique knack of offending customers. The, the economy is expanding, but we're back down to threes. Okay, all right. You know what? Let's go to accounts receivable clerk. Let's deal with money. Oh, okay. That, that gets people. It, most folks who have been like positive with that, yeah. like, they're just not expecting it. Like the prompts haven't asked me to like remember this shit before. What is that? <laughs> well, it was so funny because it's set up, and I'm just like, why are you asking about a car? You're, you're giving me this information. Why are you asking about a car, right? And now then the the the, the other shoe drops, and you're like, oh, I should have paid attention. <laughs> oh well. Accounts receivable, clerk. You said. Mm hmm Please. All right, you got it. 27000 for a year, your own desk, two-week vacation, working telephone, and a jacket. You're under pressure to complete MMM three accounts receivable within the hour when your calculator batteries go dead. You borrow a friend's calculator, run to the drugstore for new batteries, or do it by hand. Let's just borrow a friend's calculator. We, we, we're charming. You display a sense of priorities of not much sense of equipment maintenance. Bernard lends you his calculator for a price, 10 cents per minute. To say thanks, you buy Bernard dinner at McDonald's. Yeah, perfect. Hey, it's dinner. You take the only existing copies of the M&M3 accounts receivable listing home. 
Mm. They are stolen from your car while you are buying Jesus. calculator batteries at the Mini Mart. Do you try to reconstruct them without telling anyone? Report to Carrie Hoffman, the VP of Finance. Ask customers for information or pretend they never existed. One seems like a really stupid idea. Let's ask our customers for the information. MNC's customers immediately ask Carrie Hoffman what is going on. <laughs> and you are forced to handwrite apologies to every customer. Oh, handwrite? Oh, of course. Yeah, obviously, 82. You learn that your department is to be computerized. Do you learn to use the computer, apply for another position with an MNC, or go on welfare? Let's learn to use the computer. Show excellent motivation. Carrie Hoffman jokes that computers don't need batteries. You can add basic uh, uh, and Pascal uh, uh. to the languages on your resume. Oh, there you go. You did an average job. Okay. After two years, you had pragmatic decision making. You hid problems that grew to major proportions. Used poor judgment. Acted in a progressive, decisive manner. And again, I acted had an aggressive go getter approach. The economy mm -hmm. is fair, and well, we've got a couple of threes hanging out. None of them are in my wheelhouse. You've, no, you've, you've, I, you've none already, of this is in my wheelhouse. You've already expended the threes that were in your wheelhouse. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, uh, we did the engineer route. That did not go well. Um, let's go s skill assembler then. Okay. 29000 per year, your own desk, two week vacation, medical plan, and a keychain. Rumor okay. of a temporary work slowdown <sighs> hits concurrently, so uh, the whole union thing's coming up once again. Okay, we're going to say we're, we're not going to take the union offer this time. Decline the union offer. You decline joining mm -hmm. the union, which meets with management approval. A private meeting, Brooks DuPont, the executive VP, promises you job security as a reward for your loyalty. Now you can afford to clean the egg off your car. Mm -hmm. The union organizing drive becomes more active. You are pressured to join by your co-workers in the economic climate. You no! Are, I, I refuse. Dude. I refuse. You risk security, but have pleased management. Hope they invite you to lunch, because the union members won't. Then mm -hmm. Sylvia Platt, a continuing education teacher, wants you to publish a somewhat candid paper on working conditions. So we're going to decline. No, you, thank you. You defer to Frank Herman's negative reaction and miss a possible opportunity to establish a bright, literate image. Of course, Sir Walter Raleigh wrote The History of Man in prison. Mm-hmm. You did a good job. You had independence and you stayed out of office politics. I don't know whether that was independence that you did. <laughs> it was straight up. I was about to say, he told me not to do it. And I said, okay. <laughs> the economy is depressed. <laughs> Nevertheless, you have fours open to you once again. Ooh, putting in finances again. Let's go four. I mean, sorry, sorry let's go there, two. Trading in financial. I, I know, you're like, four. <laughs> four, <laughs> and you're like, there's three of them. Damn it. Okay, you had poor judgment. You got a mm -hmm. lot of good things on your side. 38000 a year, own desk, two-week vacation, the Watts line, and a Malcolm Farnsworth picture. Okay. Uh, here we go with Pat again. Recommends buying out Mel Design Co. based on private info about a breakthrough in circuit development. Okay, let's explore it further. Okay. This time. Spoken like someone investing their own money. Good strategy, but eventually you must return to the option board and make another decision. Back here then we let's go. Ac let's acquire it. All right. Yelp. Following in the founder's mm -hmm. footsteps. Now Carrie Hoffman uh, raises hell again. Mm hmm So this time, let's approach and question Carrie Hoffman in private. Maybe over some drinks. Yeah. Your discretion is very diplomatic, particularly since Carrie had good cause to avoid the acquisition. Uh, now, Elaine, the editor of Circuit News Monthly, a key trade publication, asked for financial help once again. Last time you made a stock purchase and immediately lost the game. <laughs> so let's not do that. Let's... Look for other alternatives. As it turns out, what he really needs is a good accountant on a good stock tip. He arranges finances, and Elaine agrees to favorably interview Malcolm Farnsworth III, you know, and sees president. Hmm. You did a good job. You acted in a progressive, Great. decisive manner. You had an aggressive go-getter approach. You had good interpersonal skills, and you had good judgment. Great. Economy is fair, and uh, we have fives open to us now. Uh, uh, let's go with accounting supervisor. Accounting supervisor. Unfortunately, you are remembered for hiding problems that grew to major proportions and using poor judgment. I remember for acting in a person decisive manner, but that's not good enough. You're out of You don't okay. get that job. All right, well, then let's go compensation supervisor. You're remembered for good things this time. There we go. And you got this. 47000 a year, cubicle matching furniture, and personalized stationery. 
Matching furniture. Oh 33 boy. years, been with MMC for 11. Frank Herman, wow. the VP of Manufacturing, asks you to give a higher than normal salary to a special recruit, right and star. Do you grant the higher salary or stick to established compensation tables? Yeah, I, I think we're going to we're going to establish old Mark here as a toady. So let's grant the higher salary. You get a good reputation with blind people. You have the judgment to be flexible in company policy when it is in the company's best interests. You hope Frank returns the favor when you want to transfer the manufacturer. Mm. MMC is under heavy pressure from women employees about compensation structures. Joyce mm -hmm. Stern the VP of admin asks you to manipulate the figures to indicate that women receive equal pay. Your research indicates differently. What do you do? Manipulate the numbers, report the situation accurately, or ask Jason Parlay to intercede. 100% Toady, manipulate those numbers. You've joined a conspiracy with a powerful manager who perceives you as a capable worker, but these numbers cannot be hidden forever. Griffith now rotates to look at the chat and the bleak realities of real life and asks you all, mm. can't they? <laughs> you could become another yeah. statistical fatality. Helena Gray, a close friend, files for a worker's compensation extension when you know she is fully recovered. The application comes to you for approval. Do you approve it, reject it, try to talk some sense into her, or sign someone else's name to the claim? A close it's friend, been... but you know she's <laughs> fully recovered, and she's filing for an extension on her workers' comp. This is bad judgment, but I really want to see what happens. Let's sign someone else's name to the claim. You are a terrible forger. The file comes right back to your box. Your choices are harder than ever. Welcome back. <laughs> right, they reject it. They reject it. Sorry. Sorry, friendo. Don't bother to bring a nice bottle of wine to dinner at Helena's house tonight. You'll most likely wind up wearing rather than drinking it. You okay. did a poor job. Ah. You, uh, well, you had good judgment. You befriended Doug mm -hmm. McArthur and Frank Herman. You had a rather incomplete attachment to honesty, but also had impeccable <laughs> honesty, but had a rather incomplete attachment to honesty. <laughs> you had a brazen what? lack of ethics. My For hurt. Forging My someone's hurt. signature. And, of course, yeah. you know... <clears throat> Be fudging numbers, saying that uh, uh -huh. women receive equal pay. Uh huh. Economy is fair. Uh, you got a couple of fours. Uh, a senior accounting clerk. You are remembered for hiding problems that get a major proportion, and poor <laughs> judgment. You're ever good at personal skills, and you maintain even the crisis. Yeah, you have the job, if, a senior accounting. If clerk. I make it to president, it's gonna be a miracle. But let's see what happens. You're thirty-five. 13 years have passed. Uh, note that uh, you're, you're you're spending a while like in these jobs. These are not like mm -hmm. these job <laughs> reviews uh, are taking a while. I know, I know. My life is ticking away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Mark Antonio is just telling himself Julius Caesar was 40 when he started, right? <laughs> He's just telling himself that. Uh. Let's see, uh, I believe uh, Mark Anthony died in his 50s, so uh, yep. you got some time uh -oh. still. Uh-oh. <laughs> 15 years, baby. More drinking. All right, let's roll. More <laughs> drinking. Bucky Carter, MMC's leading salesman, on a roll. You remember oh, Bucky, Bucky Carter, right? Oh, yeah, he loved me. He returns from Dynamic Industries in order that puts the MM3 line into the black. While processing the paperwork, you know Dynamic is already extended beyond their credit limit. Do you recommend approval? Report to the VP of Finance or recommend psychiatric counseling for Bucky. Oh, let's screw with Bucky three. Most salesmen are recruited from asylums. Please make another selection. <laughs> <laughs> now, now Inferno is finding some of the humor in the video. <laughs> yes, I am. Um, he's on a roll, so this could blow up in Bucky's face. So let's recommend the approval. Your recommendation is the green light to go ahead. Bucky promises you anything in return. You indicate that a sensitive area of his anatomy will be required if Dynamic doesn't pay. Mm -hmm. Joshua Colon, Hulon, the president of Meld Design Co., a vendor, asks you to speed up payment of his invoices. Do you do it? Ask the VP of Finance, or don't do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll do it. Why not? Sounds like fun. You are answering a perfectly legitimate request. It is not a very good business practice, but it is a good way to get a golf invitation. Sweet, and with golf comes drinking. 
Bucky Carter asks for an $8,000 advance against commission for the Dynamic industry sale. You know the sale has only a 50% chance of completion. Do you decide to defer to your supervisor, refuse, or approve? Yeah, let's throw it up to the supervisor. Carrie Hoffman says treat it like your own money was involved. Normally you'd invest in Swiss bonds, but Bucky was a defensive tackle in college. You pull a strategic play by sending him straight to the quarterback. Carrie. Mmm. Mark, you did a poor job. Ugh. You maintained humor. Mm-hmm. You, you, B- Bucky Carter's still saying some good words, but you had poor judgment. Mm-hmm. And nevertheless, you consistently followed MMC's policy. The economy is expanding, but your options are not. <laughs> I'm noticing a trend in poor judgment. Uh... <laughs> Okay, you know what? Maybe I'm I'm forcing a, a round peg through a square hole. Maybe we just need to go into engineering, engineering training. Okay, remember for some good stuff and some bad stuff. Here we are, though. Thirty-eight thousand wow. own desk, two-week vacation, medical plan, and a keychain. Uh, we've seen this prompt before. With uh, yeah, work yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna, I believe, taking work to the seminar well, was, uh, was I a like positive that thing. Option. Yeah, yeah. So let's do that. All right. Yep. You get it done. Your supply of gum mm-hmm. and a pair of running shoes. Uh, here's the two seat English sports car. Oh yeah. Uh, buy a new car. Yeah. Buy That's a new good. car. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Engineer trainees are expected to be expert chauffeurs as well, and uh, the best engineers worked out pretty well for you. Want to do that again? No. Let's try a little bit different. Let's try to work alone. Mark Anthony, the intense socializer, like changes his I Yeah, he's 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 realizing that working with people shows he has poor judgment. So if he works alone, <laughs> it'll be perfect. No one can judge him, right? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. You opt for early retirement while still on the premises. As the hermit, you even eat lunch alone. Look forward to a full career of justifying your existence. Get an average job. Press and go get her approach, team player instincts and independence. The economy is fair. And you burned through all the threes. Wow. Wow. Um oh, I did burn through all the threes. You you wow. spent every single three. <laughs> that is amazing. I didn't even know you could do that. <laughs> um Let's be accounts payable clerk then. Okay. Congratulations, you got this. Uh, hovering around right. the same salary wow, thanks to your employee what? tenure here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's right. been with 17 years and uh, he's still a clerk. Bernard, a driver in your carpool is late four days in a row during a crucial period of the M&M 3 microcomputer launch. Do you get out of the carpool, give Bernard a new alarm clock, or continue arriving late? Get out of the carpool. Quit strategy of a bad execution, you tell Bernard on his day to drive. It takes three hours to walk home. Oh. Poor judgment right there. <laughs> Poor we we have we have we have a a theme. That's it. Your work group asks you to contribute to Carrie Hoffman's birthday gift, uh, which is a gift you've already bought for Carrie. No. Oh. You pay and hold your gift, pay and give your gift, or refuse to pay and give your gift. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, I think my new objective for Mark is to see how long I can hold him to working here by having just bad judgment. Um, okay. We will... Pay and give my gift. Okay. Are these, like, reruns? What do you mean? I, I was reading uh, a question oh, in chat, chat about, like, oh, if I was I just, see. like... Like, I was, like, replaying, like, here's previous content that's, like, happened before. Never mind the chat overlay that's appearing, like, on the screen. And I suppose now my voice. <laughs> hey, no, we are real. You said? <laughs> okay. Your peers look at you suspiciously, but who would buy two hangings on purpose? Carrie, a freak for African artifacts, loves it. Now you must figure how to avoid weekly trips to the African Cultural Museum with Carrie. Mm. Bucky Carter invites you on a three-day weekend to a posh ski resort. Do you skip one day of work? Yes. All right, we have a, a mixed relationship with Bucky Carter. I know, poor judgment. Acceptable to call in sick if you've corrected your tardiness problem. 
If you return with frostbite or a broken leg, your illness may only be starting. You did a good job! Pragmatic mm, decision okay. making, had a perfect sales personality, and Bucky Carter saying good words about you. The economy is depressed, though. And I have a feeling that if I burn through all the threes, I think I'd have to do just so good to jump from two to four, which is insane. Uh, especially uh, since you spent some of the fours as well. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, this is this is a downward spiral. So let's <laughs> escalate it. Let's strike while the iron is hot and become a general helper in the mail room. Back to the mail room. Congratulations. <laughs> 35,000, week vacation, Malcolm Farnsworth pictures. I'm the highest paid motherfucker in that mailroom. <laughs> sure are. It. So, back here to the punch bowl. Now, mm, yes, uh, perhaps right. you wish to keep the vodka for yourself. Yes, you're, three. <laughs> competitive three, drinking. definitely. You make sure to invite Shank to your private Christmas party. He definitely prefers your punch to that the company party. Nice. Now, uh, this maintenance man is scolding you. Uh, the last time you oh, had this right. thing, you asked for written permission, and it was... Uh, Blah, 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 bureaucracy, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is Beth, so, the executive VP secretary, asking you to help. So we will politely say no. Okay. Brooks DuPont's secretary doesn't say anything, but wonders about your Jekyll and Hyde personality. You lurch off to your own area. And as another favor to her, because she is powerful, uh, you stay late mm -hmm. to do some photocopying. Pursuing your copying, you discover an opening in the marketing department. Yeah, let's do it. All right, we're applying. Maybe, maybe we can backdoor this shit. Okay. Did a good job, but you good. did provide ineffective solutions to problems. Yeah. That sounds that sounds powerful. The, the economy course. is depressed, just like you. <laughs> well, you ticked off mailroom now. Or <laughs> Jesus, I don't know. Maintenance person. Let's be the highest paid maintenance person. Start thirty-seven thousand a year. You're forty-three. Twenty-one years. <laughs> 43 years old still hanging out with Bucky. Well, you ain't hanging out with Bucky. Bucky's too far up the list for you now. <laughs> oh, that's right, Bucky. Oh, God. Okay. Um, Let's just bitch to the supervisor. Let's be that guy. Okay. Three. It may be a momentary nuisance to your supervisor, but you are marked as an aware and concerned employee. As a bonus, you receive an extra ration of janitor and a drum this week. Oh, baby, yeah. No, Over here complaining about the great. sloppy appearance of maintenance people. Deduce that neatness will help you advance. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's, um... Let's buy an iron. Yeah, let's do that. That okay. worked well. Neatness starts in the home, as we see before. Mm -hmm. And now mm -hmm. we have this whole leak in a roof happening again. All right. Okay, I was really curious about this. Let's move the boards. After moving the boards, you head home for some shut-eye. You're awakened from a sound sleep by your panic-stricken supervisor, Harriet Nance. After she has calmed down and retrieved the circuit boards, Harriet indicates that you should be promoted to the day shift. You did a nice. good job, Mark. And the economy good is job. expanding. But I mean, that, so, but that, we have a... that, those, those were ones you were doing. and I know, exactly. They, and, uh, since, you've already done all the threes. <laughs> I was about to say, uh, so uh, the only way Mark will be able to do... I only see Draftsman the Assembler in, in his past in his future, and he'll have to propel from two to four. So the economy will probably have to be really good, and I'll have to do a good job, too. So let's go with uh, Draftsman. You're remembered for a lot of great things and providing mm -hmm. ineffective solutions to problems. Nevertheless, here we are. You're 45, 23 By years making old. a little bit more money. <laughs> Remember how well uh, Chuck was doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You feel overworked, but are pressed to finish drawings or redesign them into my computer casings. You know, we work harder, work longer, socialize. I remember last time we socialized and... Yeah, you know what? We I think a uh, now 45-year-old Mark Anthony is realizing that I'm <laughs> going to get my shit together. Uh, let's work harder. Increased productivity is recognized by Conrad Edison, but Conrad raises concerns for your health. It brings you weekly allotments of milk of magnesia. Your request for mm. Jack Daniels is rejected. Of course you Damn. would request Jack Daniels. Of course I would, exactly. Now, working hard on the casing redesign, you have come to feel isolated from contact with company management. Now, Malcolm Farnsworth mm. has come by. Oh, we'll, Previously, uh, you invited him to the Thursday night poker game. Yeah, but that was awkward. Let's just ask how the company's doing. Short on originality, but long on concern. Leaves a weak but good impression. Draftsmen have never been known as talk show hosts, so don't worry. And hmm. uh, you're offered an opportunity to participate in a computer graphics test. You've been chosen based on the M2 work. Yeah, we'll say yes. 
All right, you do well. You did a good job after two years at the discipline to finish work before playing. You worked. Come on, economy. Hard. That's a go get her. Come approach. on, economy. Even with a good oh, performance, God. expanding economy though, you okay? You're you're dead in the water. I'm really curious to see what happens when there's no other options. Let's go with assembler and see what happens. You got it. Forty-seven okay. years old, twenty-five years, forty-six thousand dollars per year. You are assigned to an online production crew doing a very boring wiring job. Uh, in a previous Mark Anthony life, you uh, concentrated on the people around you. We 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 have to we have to try our work. We have to just buckle down. <laughs> the end is coming. Good performance leads you to a solid reputation. Other opportunities, other also avoids uh -huh. on-the-job accidents, which can cause permanent disfigurement, social life setbacks. You discover a cost-saving wiring technique in your assembly job, which indicates possible savings of ten percent per unit. Okay, we'll still let Frank know. That's good. There's the best course, mm -hmm. and an engineer asks you to assemble <sighs> a toy rocket ship he has designed for his son. Maybe you this is what? your chance. Yeah, I'm gonna go into the toy business. <laughs> this isn't working out for me at all. I've just been fucking <laughs> in the drain for like 12 years. <laughs> exactly. Up and down and up and down. Well, at least you won't have supervisor interruptions. Brighton looks forward to the time when you have toys to sell. You quit, Mark. Nim C hates to lose talented people. You'd be particularly missed because your independence, your cost effective solutions. The good words Becky Carter says about you befriending Doug McCarthy and Frank Carmen. MMC well, hopes an okay. analysis of your financial condition will cause you to return and pursue the executive suite again. So, so I have a question for you. What happens? Let's just assume I did an average you, job you would have been fired. on it. I would have been fired? Yep. You would have had no opportunities available to you. Just Yeah, there's fired. no jobs. Yep. We're, yeah, we're yep. just out of jobs. Sorry. As, as soon as you ran out of threes, like that's, that was what was going to happen. You were going to be fired. So... Him actually, we took that we made the best decision we could for Mark Antonio. He got out before he was fired. Exactly. This in the last possible prompt you had before he was going to be fired. You you're exploring a different life choice. Mark Anthony is now making toys instead. Of... Don't say they're toy soldiers. That's perfect. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Now I understand more about the mechanics of this game. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, I do. Yeah, that was one heck. That was like, it wasn't even a downward spiral. It was like stagnation, right? It, it was. was complete and utter stagnation. Yeah, well, we do have a family life. It's just like, you know, with just like, you, you had opportunities to advance there, but eventually, mm -hmm. like, you just ran out of, like, all the rungs you could climb up are gone. <laughs> and now. <laughs> That's a good point. There was. Big gaps in that ladder, and there's no way getting up to. You just the next you, you just box. weren't able to like reach up above anymore. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Wow, right. A, a little bit of a family life. Yeah. Touch. Right. Is that sign? Is that on and off? Oh boy, this is actually the most depressing end. Actually, no, it's no, no, it's not depressing. I mean, you didn't get fired. You know, you, you didn't get fired, and maybe. And maybe he had a, a very successful, you know, toy um, toy company. Maybe. Probably not. He has poor judgment. <laughs> well, you know, I don't. Maybe he, you know, he sobered up <laughs> in multiple ways. Oh, that's true. That's true. I like that. I like that. <laughs> wow! Great, great, great little game. Mm -hmm. Fully armed with knowledge now. Surely if we did another run, you'd just be able to blitz through those early rungs. You know what? I hear that there's uh, a harder difficulty. Is that the case? Can we, oh, well, no. Can like, we... you're making it harder on yourself by the choices you're choosing in character creation. Based on, like, oh. work experience, your age, and, like, how well you've done in, like, school and whether you went to graduate school. Like, that's all, that's already influencing stuff. Like, your starting options oh. and things like, uh, like the years and how long. Like, your Chuck Hemsworth... When he went to graduate wow. school, he didn't need much time before his job reviews. Mark Anthony Missed. needed more time in his job reviews. Oh, I see. Well, if you're up for it, I want to try one more time to see if I can't get to the top spot. Okay, you want to do it with Mark oh, Anthony my. again? See if now you can, uh, like, the redemption tour for him? Yes! Yes, let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. All right, redemption Mark Anthony, tour. the fourth? The, <laughs> the third? 
fifth, I don't know. But yeah, let's, I think, let's try this. Redemption I think the last one's the third. I think the second one is the one that went immediately to like getting fired. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> right. Okay, yeah, this is the Go to fire, okay. directly get fired. That resume on file. Okay, one last ride. Okay, one last ride of Mark. Okay. All right. Which of these twos you want? You know them all at this point. <laughs> I know, yeah, I know them all intimately. Let's go with sales training. Okay. You got the job. Okay, perfect. No, Bucky so Carter is inviting go... you to go out. Okay, we're gonna go drinking with them. Yep. Those go down easily. But, yeah, but we're going to go back to the room and study before we sleep. All right. You displayed an interest in mingling with the boys, but an overriding concern for your responsibilities. Besides, you haven't made reservations ahead of time at Big Lil's. Yeah, exactly. Now, Bucky Carter is calling with this priority request, and you may recall this information. Mm-hmm. Yes, I do. It's just, this is going... Oh, yes. Okay, so we're going to try and contact Jack Stark. Don't look, Griffin God. Don't look. <laughs> Don't look. Don't look. It's fine. He, he's, he's seen this gameplay before. Oh, perfect. Jack Stark is out of the office with his mistress, as you may recall. Gertie, we're gonna have Gertie call. Jack arrives at the office 45 minutes later and without another word says, Let's do this let's thing. Do this. Unspoken trust develops between the two of you. That's a good job after one yes, year. Yes, perfect. Economy is fair. Where are we going? Okay, we're gonna go customer service clerk. All right, good things. You got good the job. Things. Beautiful. Bucky Carter, a key salesman, asked hit you to find him a copy of a report as you're preparing to leave for an evening engagement with all prevailed upon. Last time you said, fuck you, Bucky. Fuck you. And I know. Out. But we're going to help Bucky. We're going to help him out. Although in a hurry, you have helped Bucky. This is appreciated and you are told of a sales project opportunity. You appease your romantic interest with a small token of affection. In addition, Bucky Carter is a friend. Beauty. You're in the middle of this conversation with an irate customer, and Sam Danger comes to your desk demanding a weekly mm -hmm. report. Last time you put the customer on hold, and that seemed And that good. was pretty good. Yeah, so let's do that again. Yep. Right. Sam walks away with an understanding smile. Mm -hmm. The first time in weeks you have conflict with an evening activity, you had drinks with the group project the manager, and that went pretty well. Yeah, let's do that again. Can we try We're going to make Mark Anthony a social drinker, not someone with significant <laughs> substance abuse problems. Good job. After one mm -hmm. year, the economy is fair. Now we got some fours. You want All right, to be a salesman. You're going you're gonna to brave sure. salesman again, huh? I, I got brave salesman. I'm learning. I'm lear All right. The regional sales manager, okay. Jack Stark, arranges your lunch with three key clients. Okay. Alan Greenbuck of Analog Concerns, Derek mm -hmm. Clayton of Superior Electronics, and Andrew Grevy. Dynamic Industries. Okay. Alan, Analog. Derek is Superior, and then Grevy is Dynamic. I don't know. Okay, let's, let's just, let's, let's do a, a Cadillac. Okay, Cadillac. Mm -hmm. It's always good to impress the clients of the prestigious American car known for its comfort and economy. Get mm -hmm. a call from your old friend, Derek Clayton, about a major order. Let's see in a half hour. What's his company's name? Derek is... Hold up. Wait, I, did I freak myself? Did I mess myself up? A A. No okay, helping. Hold up. No helping. Derek is superior. Derek is superior electronics. One. Final answer. Yeah. You have saved the situation. Your finely tuned memory. Good salesperson yes. instincts. Proceed with your call. On the way to your sales call, you doze off and bumped into a stop to delivery truck. The truck isn't damaged. However, steam starts to pour out the front of your car. You continue on the sales call or pull it and get repairs. Well, we gotta get car repairs. I mean, steam's coming out. I mean, is it your car though? Uh, it's the company car. Yeah. Oh, it's the company car. Okay, you've convinced me, dear friend. I will continue on to the sales call. You just barely sputter into the client's parking lot and leave the car parked at the side of the entrance. Derek is impressed with your punctuality. On the way to lunch, Derek tells the party attendant to have the smoking junk heap over there towed. You smile, expecting sales commissions from Derek to replace the car, and more. Nice. At lunch, he agrees to the biggest deal in MMC's history, pending immediate availability and shipping information. You call the office, only to find a sales trainee. Wait a N second! You're on the other end? We're Bucky! We've become Bucky! Okay, well, we know what happened, and... and... Uh, you, you get me that information, tr sales trainee. You get me that information. The information is quite possibly correct, but you don't want to commit. You cite ballpark figures and promise to be more specific later. Derek Clayton wonders how big an order it takes to get complete information. 
Mm -hmm. Did a good job. Uh, that was mildly ineffective, but overall, still good. Still good. Uh, we and, remember Derek's company. So yes, that's, that's the right. Thing. And you m were punctual. Yeah. Good. The economy is fair. Uh, would you like some fives? You don't know all these uh, fives. First time for Mark to get in the five. Let's go with. These are sales. Hmm. I, I don't so know. we'll 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 deviate a little bit to um, compensation supervisor. Yeah, it is the second time for Mark to get into fives. Ineffective good solutions yeah. to problems, good interpersonal skills, you got this. Beauty. Frank Herman, the VP of manufacturing, asks you to give a higher than normal salary to a special recruit. We gotta, okay. we gotta give B, that yeah, again. B, yeah, yeah, we're gonna do that, that worked well. Good mm -hmm. job, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, we're, he, the MMC's under heavy pressure from women employees about compensation structures. Last time we we're manipulated gonna, the numbers, and that was a brazen it, lack of ethics. Yeah, we're going to ask Jason Parley to intercede. Jason raises an eyebrow quizzically and says he'll investigate the matter. Later, you find another compensation supervisor has been assigned to the task. You discover later that Jason Parley is not only impressed with your honesty, but also with your discreet memory capability. Here we go. Here we go. Elena Gray, close friend, files for a workers' compensation extension when you know she's fully recovered. Uh, you... Tried to forge someone else's name, got sent back to the <laughs> yeah, front, that and was then rejected. Bad idea. So let's just talk some sense into her. She's our friend, right? Talk some sense into her. It's a long, tough conversation, killing two bottles of wine and a few million brain cells. When Helena finally sobers up, she's forgotten all about her scam. You did Beauty. a good job. Good judgment. Beauty. Befriended people. Good job, Mark. In her good at personal skills, positive management style, the economy's expanding. Six, 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 six. Woo, 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 woo. Let's go district sales manager. You've made friends with senior sales management, so you got this job. There we go. 51,000 a year, Watts cubicle, line. travel attendant allowance, life insurance policy, and access to a Watts line. A dynamic industries buyer, Pietro, requests a kickback in return for a big order on the final production run of the MM2 microcomputer. You wince and say, yes, no, how much, or no, and then you report the incident to Dynamic Industries Senior Management. The last one. You've established a moral position and covered yourself by telling management Pietro will be furious when Dynamics Management is informed, but Pietro won't be around Dynamic Industries for long. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Your best salesperson, Bucky Carter, that's right, he's oh. yours now. Yes, is I control the Bucky is offered a job by your biggest customer and a lot of concerns. Do you counter with offering him a raise, encouraging him to leave, ignoring him, or telling the regional sales manager, Jack Stark, you are the compensation supervisor? This is this is yeah. something that you do? This is your thing? Yeah. This is my thing. So you know what? This is a classic approach. He's probably gunning for a raise, so let's offer him a raise. You keep Bucky, perhaps antagonize analog concerns, but keep a winning combination in place. You are both on the way up. Mm -hmm. Complaints come in about a closeout shipment of MM2 units. It seems the bracket has been badly designed. You <sighs> inform the regional sales manager, complain to manufacturing, or try to pacify your customers and work with engineering. Let's do the sensible approach and go with three. You have chosen the most direct, corrective action. Engineering happily fixes the problems now that you have given them some time. After three Beauty. years, you did a good job as district sales mm -hmm. manager. You weren't compensation supervisor. What the hell am I talking about? You had impeccable mm -hmm. honesty. Bucky Carter continuing to say good words. Supported and had faith in your people, team player instincts, and had good customer relations. The economy is fair, and you do have a seven open to you as regional sales manager. Now, Let's become regional sales manager, Michael Scott. I mean, Mark Antonio. That's right. <laughs> You got this job now, 70,000, 31, Ooh. been here nine years, private office, travel entertainment mm -hmm. allowance, life insurance policy, Chevy company car, garage parking. Due to an expanded customer base, the acceptance of the MMM3 microcomputer, there's a severe product shortage. During the shortage, you must decide who gets your available product. Longtime customers, big new entrants in the field, the highest bidder. There is a saying in sales that retaining a customer is worth signing, you know, X number of new customers, right? So we're going to keep it to our long-term customers. They are bread and butter. One. You maintain the status quo, profits stay constant, and your long-time customers will respond to your loyalty in kind. Mm-hmm. New product sales are booming. Product supply is right on target. Your sales force is straining at the leash. You want to expand sales territories, bud? 
Yeah. <laughs> well, but our sales force is straining. Though. As in they're, they're but... just chomping at the bit like they, you know. Oh. Or, or maybe oh, straining or, the leash. Oh, so it's not they're being straight. Oh, I get it. They just really they're hungry. They're hungry. Uh, one, yes. Let's expand. You choose increasing business through expansion. Your media expansion concern is to minimize costs while allowing for increased profits through a larger sales base. How do you expand your sales force? To like mm. you know, do you create new territories or expand existing territory? Minimize costs. So let's expand our existing territories because we already have the logistics probably in mind so yeah let's expand existing territories the strategy strains existing staff but it creates individual incentives and keeps costs down a competition develops to have the largest territory walk in shoes wins this contest with his iowa to the aleutian islands area <laughs> walk in shoes wow what a name what a legend iowa to the aleutian islands you take over a new <laughs> region from jack stark a district sales manager spot is open. To yes. whom do you give this spot? The leading salesman in another district, Bucky. The senior salesman, Edgar. Your new region's leading salesman, Jesse. The chairman's nephew, Vincent. Ooh, this is a cool option. Lots of things, but you know what? I'm like 100% team Bucky now. So right. let's give you, it to you Bucky. You and Bucky all the way. Bucky is a good performer, but his promotion antagonizes existing personnel. Yeah, it would. His performance success is based on an aggressive approach. If he is not assassinated in office, though, he will be great at this. He'll be a great district manager. Yeah. You did a good job. You had good nice. customer relations, an aggressive go-getter approach. You were frugal. Mm -hmm. And Bucky Carter continues to say good words. The economy is depressed, but you could become Western Area Sales Manager. Let's do it. Western Area Sales. Remember, for great things, mm -hmm. 83,000, 34, Baby. 12 years, private. Buicks. I, just think about this, Chuck, you know, just started mm -hmm. at 30, and here Mark Anthony is, you know, grinding here. Three-hour lunch yeah. grind. Yeah, nice. I like Sales it. Sales plummet as the Federal Reserve Board tightens the money supply. The slump is serious mm -hmm. enough to threaten mad project plans. Do you disclose yeah. a sales slump and redo plans? Do you cover up the problems? Do you ask to change jobs? Or do you go on vacation without a telephone? No, we got to hit this head on. Disclose, disclose sales slumps and redo their plans. One. Straightforward way to deal with the problem. Laying the cards on the table avoids having to bluff anyone. You may ruffle a few feathers, but you improve performance quickly. You decline a job offer from the Federal Reserve Board. <laughs> nice. The, the company newsletter, Micro Month as an analysis of the current sales decline, you become the main interview. Do you blame the sales decline on your superiors, mm -hmm. bad market conditions, bad mm -hmm. luck, or products? Oh, I, I learned from Chuck, you don't besmirch. We, he squeaked by on that one by blaming the product. And we're going to say bad market conditions. That's a classic, classic answer. Almost a cliche, but accurate nonetheless. Throw in the yeah. Federal Reserve Board and fat welfare cheating to make a totally convincing excuse. Beauty. Sam Danger, VP of Marketing, is upset with overall sales performance. He uh. approaches you about a coup. It's the VP of Sales, Red Turner. You say, <sighs> okay. Do you say, no way. Do you say, I'll think about it, or say no. And then you inform Red. I really love how this game escalates and the decisions are big. Yeah, like, oh, you want to stay out of politics? No, politics doesn't no. stand. <laughs> so do we become, this is very clear. I either help the coup, um, be neutral, which is probably not a good idea. So I have to choose sides, right? I'm just trying to think of the, Mark the Fourth's a current <laughs> reputation. And it's mostly of loyalty. For no one then inform Red. You've covered yourself departmentally and lit the match to a major conflagration. Sam Danger absolutely hates you. Well, Red Turner wonders why you were approached. Buy a hard hat for the shrapnel. Mm. You did a good job. Nice. Four years. Positive management style. Open manner of addressing problems. You had the perfect sales personality. You've offended Sam Danger. Mm. The economy is fair, and you could become the VP of sales. V VP, baby. You're remembered for all manner of good things. And good you things. got those jobs. Hopefully you don't need to go into marketing. 
Oh 38 God, no. years, 16 years at MMC, 108000 per year, oh, private oh, office, oh, stock oh. options, expense budget, life insurance, view a company car, and three-hour lunches. Wow, take that, Chuck. Yeah. All right. You have just been promoted to this position. Doug mm -hmm. MacArthur, Senior VP of Operations, suggests a celebratory get-together. Of course, you're expected to host and subsidize the celebration. The newbie thing. You stage a lunch, a party at home, or ignore the suggestion. You know what? Let's make it a little bit more intimate. Let's make it party at home. Not that intimate, but you know what I mean. Uh, party at home. It'll you, be that. Did you yeah, mean let's... that in the form of like intimate, or do you mean that in the form of like saving money? Well, actually, that's actually both. But like everyone does lunch, right? But I think my character is, you know, gregarious enough that you could have a nice party at home, save some money. And, uh, you know, schmooze a little bit. Okay. So, yeah, we'll go with two. You invite 20 people and 200 show up. You empty every Chinese restaurant and pizza parlor in a 10-mile radius. Okay. Cool. Sounds like a great party. Frank Herman, VP of Manufacturing, requests additional funds to expand production of MAD computer programs. They must come from your budget. Yes or no? Yes. You made friends with Frank Herman, but now must decide where the money is to come from. So what do you reduce? Promotional budgets or sales incentives? Oh, you can't screw your salespersons. Their incentives are what caused our, like, now I'm all serious mode again, our, our expansion, right? We'll have to do promotional budgets. There are cuts in some programs. The loudest complaints come from Benton Bulls, who sees his entertainment budget halved. This is not a big concern. Everyone ignores the PR department. <laughs> Jason Parley from Finance orders price increase on pre increases on the M&M &M 3 to generate cash flow. You know this will hurt MMC's position in a very competitive market. What's your response? Do you argue for stable prices? Raise prices for no comment. We'll make a strong argument. Argue for stable prices. Arguing with numbers is usually futile, and Jason Parlay is certainly a big zero in your eyes right now. Whether or not to increase prices is no longer a question, only how big the increase will be and how you'll keep the M&M 3 competitive. You followed company policy, but must now act to maintain sales. Of course, mm -hmm. this is where the intermission ends, leaving you to write the next scene. What do you decide to do? Raise sales commissions? Promote MMC as the product leader? Or develop improved product position? Wow, okay. Um I know. You're not worrying about like minor like shit here in Executive yeah, Suite. I know. We do like big shit. The higher up you go, the bigger the shit is. We you know what? That. As as crazy as it is, I think let's go like all with our team and let's raise sales commissions. Alright. The sales force will put an extra effort, but customers still question increases. The Japanese initiate a dumping program in conjunction with your price increases. Fortunately, a massive anti-Japanese backlash helps the M&M 3 post all-time sales records. Investors in rice commodities lose a bundle. We got lucky. Did a good job after four years. Mm -hmm. Party socializing, Doug McArthur and Frank Herman befriended, team player instincts, abrasive encounters in the PR field. Having mm -hmm. good relations with the sales force. The economy is fair. Uh, ninth. Nine 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 nine. So, uh, yeah, I can't be, um, I can't be promoted. Interesting. Okay. We should go. You said don't do marketing. For you know, I, I just, you know, I just thought through that out there, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do public relations then. <laughs> you are remembered <laughs> for this abra these abrasive encounters in the PR field that you just had. Oh, no. shit. No, you don't okay. get this position. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, marketing. You're remembered for offending Sam Danger, and you don't have the background to manage this department. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Administration. You don't have the background to manage this department. You have honesty and resourcefulness. No thanks. Oh, my God. Finance? You don't have the background to manage this department. You have good judgment in addressing problems. No thanks. Uh, I'm being killed by my own good judgment. God damn it. Um, well, this is no good. I'm burning through all my nines. 
Shit. I, I think those will, like, like reappear. Like, mm -hmm. I think those will reappear. Those don't count as you, like, actually doing the job. It's just, like... I just don't have the experience yeah. needed, right? Okay. Well, then let's go with... Um... Group project manager. Let's go down a little bit so we can go up again. You offended Sam Danger, but you have a mm -hmm. lot of positive things, and you do get this job. Okay. 42 years old, and with MC mm -hmm. for 20 years. Uh -huh. uh, you're not that much younger than what Mark Antonio was when he uh, quit to join the toy business. Or... Sure, but we're a lot more successful, at least. Yeah, private we're office, four levels higher. Allowance, tra life insurance policy, <laughs> Buick company car, and personal life stationery. While preparing for the MMM4 launch, you develop a new product idea with significant market potential. What do you do with it? Present it to MMC, sell it to venture capitalist, or secretly develop it in your garage? Present it to MMC. Let's be a company, man. It's going to be sort of a major opportunity. MMC has the capability to develop the product, deliver the product, and you may be an important cog in the operation. Ooh, you are, good. I like being a cog. You are not copied on a series of memos from Lane Pierce, one of your marketing project managers, to the VP of marketing, Sam Danger. You ask for a briefing, fire Elaine, or write a negative memo with Sam Danger. Just give me a briefing. One. It's a good way to get caught up on the situation while indirectly expressing desire to be copied on future memos. Intelligent employee will take the hint. Sam Hopefully. Danger asks you to attend a client meeting. Scheduled mm -hmm. at the same time as a previously arranged meeting with the VP of PR to write a speech for Malcolm Farnsworth the third. Do you decline the client meeting because fuck you, Sam Danger? Do you cancel oh. the speech meeting because fuck you, PR? Or... Try to do halvesies. Uh, half measures isn't going to do it in this case. Sam Danger. He's in charge of marketing, isn't he? Yes. He already hates us, so... Yes. What's the... Well, am I afraid I'm going to do that? So we'll decline the client meeting. I mean, he already hates us, so let's try to forge another path. You cater to Malcolm Farmsworth III, but be prepared to accept responsibility for poor sales performance in the next quarter. Sam will blame you for all future events, including lunar eclipses. Sure, probably. Did a good job. Only bad thing there is offending Sam Danger. The economy is expanding. Would you like to try to become VP of marketing? Sure, <laughs> it's not gonna happen, but let's try. You got the fucking <laughs> job. Fuck you, Sam Danger. <laughs> Sam Get the hell out I of here. Look at me. I am the Sam Danger now. All right. Production Sweet. is way up. MMC needs to generate more sales. This entails expanding markets. What do you want to do? Enter oh, uh, we did this before in foreign markets. Yeah, let's do foreign markets. Or, yes, virgin sales territory. Woo! Health mm -hmm. shots. Yeah. Now, uh, an inventor has pro approached you with a working prototype of great potential. You presented this to MMC and it went well. Yeah, let, yeah, you know what? I, I want to win, <laughs> so let's present the opportunity to MMC. All right, get the dance with the president's only child, the company party, and here we go mm -hmm. with uh, infectious hepatitis. You know what? Yeah, let's do work at home confidence. I, I like that work-life balance. It's good. All right. Get to know your family again and find that you like them. Malcolm Farnsworth mm -hmm. III storms into your office, and he's... uh. Oh, I remember this. I, the take responsibility is good. He's like, ah, it's not your fault, but nice try anyway. Yeah, so three for sure. Nice gesture. Your motion is denied. No one person could be responsible. After four years, you did good, good things. Job. The economy is fair. Would you like maybe to try becoming the senior VP of marketing? Yes, I would. Yes, I would. You pleased Malcolm Farnsworth. You had team player instincts. You had good relations with the sales force. You are now senior vice president of marketing. 50 years old and with MNC for 28 years. New job mm -hmm. level of 10. Making $181,000 per year. Private corner nice. office, $10,000 in stock options, $20,000 expense budget, executive watch room key, Mercedes company's car, company car, and country club membership. Mm -hmm. uh, you have seen this one before. This is actually how you got yeah. in with uh, Chuck last I'll, time. Yeah, Chuck. I'm going to try to pivot to sales if I can at the end, but let's continue on with our success. So for all of the above, for sure. Okay. Diplomatic way of doing it yourself. Then the senior VP of finance and operations struggle for the executive VP spot as Brooks DuPont approaches retirement. Oh, right. Uh, last time you tentatively supported Malcolm Farnsworth III. Yeah, I don't know if that didn't really do all that much, but I want to, yeah, let's do, let's just support Malcolm Farnsworth III for sure. Sir, 
Demonstrates little initiative or ambition, but loads of discreet intelligence. Mm-hmm. It's Malcolm Farnsworth here from Marketing. Lightning has been known to strike twice. You notice Malcolm looks a little like Zeus these days. And then the and I did this two. myself. Did yeah, this so let's do four. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Better be good, did it for the program, but if you are, the executive suite is within your reach. Mm-hmm. Did a good job after four years. Good in personal skills, pleasing Malcolm Farnsworth and your independence. The economy is depressed. You cannot slingshot your way to 12 uh, but you okay. could potentially see executive vice president yeah let's go with that that's new territory so that'll be exciting so yeah executive you're remembered VP. for good things and you yeah. do need to be executive vp you're 54 nice. years old making 286,000 per year private corner mm-hmm. office 50,000 stock options 40,000 expense budget Chase company car life insurance policy and country club membership let's go Let's go. Behemoth Systems, located in Houston, offers you a job as executive VP in charge of their North American operation. Do you take the job? Suggest a rival manager for the client. It's the client. Your future still lies at the MMC. They show loyalty gets you a visit to the executive suite. You hope this predestines a permanent move, but in any case, you now have monogram towels in the executive washroom. Nice. Behemoth Systems makes a tender offer for control of MMC. You had a task force to reject the bid. You Mm -hmm. fight the offer, buy some MMC stock on speculation, play up the behemoth's management team, retire. Let's buy some stock on, because a lot of people are speculating. Well, no, hold up. Let's just do our job and fight the offer, one. Okay. After rivaling the Bendix Martin Marietta takeover excitement, MMC absorbed behemoth systems. This one is so thrilling. Wide World of Sports covers it in a two-part story. Malcolm <laughs> Farnsworth okay. offers you a job as president of the International Division. His respected position in the company officed in London. So instead of being in the home office, uh, you would be president mm-hmm. of the International Division. Mm-hmm. Buy an English American Dictionary, ask for time to study the package, or decline in order to stay in the home office. See, that's a little, this is interesting, because it seems like the boss wants to give you a job. But see, I think he knows he's gunning for your position. He might care, he might not. But I think this is like, you know, sending a problem, if we want to go with the Roman thing, sending someone as a governor someplace else, so you're out of Rome. This is, this is what this smells like. You've done this a lot to your noble family in Medieval 2 Total War. <laughs> I have. Go, go to Jerusalem. I don't want to deal with you. <laughs> go to Jerusalem. Um, <laughs> it's true. So stick him on a boat. Um, so we're going to be diplomatic and say, ask for some time to study the package. Your delaying tactic eventually leads back to the option board to make another choice. So we're going to stay in the home office. Respectfully decline. You will settle for nothing less than the executive suite. Even English civilization cannot sway you. If MMC were a brokerage firm, its name would be MMC and Antonio. Antonio! <laughs> you did a good job. Good judgment. Mm-hmm. Remain loyal to management. Strong leadership qualities. Only took two years. The economy is depressed. You only but have three options open to you. We have to We have to become president or we're, we're, we will we'll just backslide again, won't we? So, Pete, M- let's M- go maybe. for Maybe. You remember that, uh, that Chuck mm-hmm. slingshotted from 10 to 12. He did. That's true. That's true. And I still have my sales background to back on because I went from marketing to VP. I can go from sales to president. But let's still go with uh, president. Welcome, let's Mark. I believe you know everyone on the board of directors. Many of us mm-hmm. wouldn't mind changing place with you, a nominee for MC's presidency. We'd like to review your very interesting career. Mm-hmm. You're most known for your independence, the healthy attention paid to your personal life, the good words Bucky Carter says about you befriending Doug MacArthur and Frank Herman. Okay. You don't have that many bad things on your record. That was a very short list. Tendency to tip the bottle, offending Sam Danger, abrasive encounters in the PR field, and providing ineffective solutions to problems. Board must now consult on your nomination to the executive suite. Alfred, meet with him. Super quick. Uh, And, you know, offers to double your salary if you come to his company. I am really, 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 really tempted to go like Uno reverse card and say like, yes, I'll take it, right? But, but my whole goal was to just like, because winning the game is, I mean, it's, we've seen, you know what? Screw it. We saw the end with Chuck, right? Let's forge a different path for Antonio. Let's accept it. Let's accept it and see what happens. President of the International Division in London, fuck it. 
Executive VP and National Transport. Maybe I'll go after your executive, sweet Alfred. Yeah, there we go. I like that. You yeah. snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. Yeah, I figured. How could you throw away the executive suite in such cavalier fashion? You should hope National Transport has a good psychiatric care program. Wow, and it just says... It doesn't wow. even give you a score or anything, just... <laughs> Wow! You're out of here. Well, because I know what would happen. I have, a th I have a really good chance that he would have succeeded, and but we already saw the you win screen, right? Which is fun, which is satisfying, but uh, I, I really wanted to know what would happen. So now I know. Yes, was that knowledge worth the price of admission? No, <laughs> I like to win. <laughs> Loved like near me. No, like, no. <laughs> no, no, it sucked. <laughs> but now I know. Uh, <laughs> all the uh, oh. all the careers uh, you've picked, like they like as you say, like the prompts do remain the same. So there's the replayability kind of spins out of that. But there's definitely jobs that you never took along the way and never saw yeah. the options or consequences for. Uh, mm -hmm. Nor did you ever see like you know like. Explore like every option in all the prompts you've seen. Like you just know what's successful, but you don't know what else you might be able to skate with. Exactly, exactly. So it's uh, it's a really dynamic game. I, I, I this was thoroughly enjoy enjoying morning and early afternoon for me. All right. Thank you, Grimith. That was awesome. Absolutely. Good job, mm -hmm. Inferno. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Conquering the conquering the executive products. suite. Eddie, well, you know it. Yes. Any any final thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I, I I mentioned this in the chat earlier when you were taking your break, but I really look forward to seeing other people play this game, what decisions that they make, and uh, I can totally see and appreciate why you ambush people with this game because that was that was delightful. Thanks. All right, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna go our separate ways now. This For voice sure. Call. All right, you take care. I'll see you in the stream. You 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 betcha. You too, buddy. Oh, you better. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> uh, all right. Oh, take it a sweet. You can be put away for now. Take that out of the toolkit. The game has crashed. DOSBox has crashed. DOSBox is not responding. Very. I don't need you to report the problem to Windows. Thank you, Windows. Microsoft.